Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Entertainment Dome. Hello again. It's been a while for the normal shows, at least. Uh, yeah, been quite a while, but that's mostly because of, as, as James has said in the past, a bit of a news drought. But we did release the movie commentary, which I hope you all enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And there will be more incoming. Oh, yes. Definitely. There will always be more. It's actually kind of funny considering the timing of our very first movie commentary, especially considering it was on the first Pokemon movie. I say that because, uh, well, a couple of days ago, as of the time of this recording, by the time it goes up, it'll probably be almost a week since it came out. But there was a new Nintendo Direct on the 1st of April, no less. Mm -hmm. And it, fortunately, it wasn't a massive troll on Nintendo's part, which would have been a real <laughs> dick move. <laughs> Well, they actually said that um, we're doing this on the 1st of April, but we swear this is true. It's like, couldn't you have moved it a day after <laughs> or a day before? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. For whatever, whatever the reason, they had a Nintendo Direct, and the very first thing they showed off, and I'm quite glad that the, this was the very first thing they showed off, because it, it, it'd, be, it'd be about time for them to show off some news, and that, would have, and, uh, that was, of course, whoosh, Mewtwo Strikes Back! Yay! <laughs> I am so glad they went with that tagline because if they didn't, the entire <laughs> internet would have been. We are so disappointed, Nintendo. <laughs> but there's also another fighter joining in. Uh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get to that when we oh, get. Oh, we'll to get it. to that. Yeah, we'll save that for a bit uh, because, uh, in case you couldn't tell, the very first thing they showed off was Mewtwo in the new Smash Brothers. Now we knew Mewtwo was going to be in the game for a while now, but uh, we because they confirmed that he was going to be DLC back in December. Hmm. But we hadn't really seen anything of him since then, and I'm so glad that we are now finally got a glimpse of him, at least. And he's finally going to be coming out very soon, actually, by the end of the month. Yes, by the end of the month. Uh, if you registered both Smash Brothers for the 3DS and for the Wii U with Club Nintendo, you should be getting a code to download Mewtwo for free. Uh at least if you did that by March 31st, I believe. If you haven't done it by then, then I'm afraid you won't be getting Mewtwo for free. You'll have to uh, pay for him. Oh, well. Uh, that's what I'm probably going to be doing. It's kind of cool, actually, that they give you the option to either buy Mewtwo for just the Wii U, just for the 3DS, or for both. Yeah. It's a nice little option. Because there are some people who might who obviously might not own the 3DS version, or they own the 3DS version, but they're not necessarily bothered about having Mewtwo on that version of the game. They prefer on the Wii U version. Yeah, probably. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm i going to be honest, Mewtwo's exclusion from Brawl and the initial roster for the new Smash Brothers didn't bother me all that much. I know Mewtwo has a lot of fans in the Smash Brothers community, but it never necessarily bothered me that he wasn't in the games anymore but i'm still glad to see him come back it's always nice uh what about you james to be fair they kind of replaced him with lucario in brawl yeah they did like, lucario pretty much played like the original mewtwo just a little bit faster so it wasn't like we lost him completely he was just changed into a different pokemon but it's nice to see him back and it also looks like they're i'm hoping he's gonna be a little bit play a little bit differently than melee well judging from what little gameplay we've seen of him he looks like he's very much kept his original move set that doesn't mm. seem to have changed all that much uh how how much else has changed uh, remains to be seen because hopefully he's a little faster i mean in all that lot because he was very very slow in the original melee well according to the tier lists of smash brothers melee Mewtwo was the worst character in the game yeah so i don't know if i agree with that i always kicked ass as Mewtwo. i i don't like tier lists in general but that's just me Hmm. But regardless, yeah, still cool to see Mewtwo. Not surprised that his final smash is Mega Evolving into Mega Mewtwo Y. I think that was pretty much a given. <laughs> the cooler looking one as opposed to the X one. Well, the, I think the reason why they went with Mega Mewtwo Y is because that was the first Mega Evolution that got revealed. Yeah. Like, we didn't see Mega Mewtwo X until X and Y came out. Mega Mewtwo Y was heavily advertised for the games. There's also um, the pure psychic one as opposed to psychic and fighting. Well, Psychic and Fighting is a cool combo. I mean, Galade yeah. is Psychic and Fighting. That's true. But, uh, yeah, in short, Mewtwo's coming out soon. Very excited. Uh, not just that, they... I'm I shouldn't be all that surprised that they confirmed this, but they shall also be releasing uh, some new costumes for the Mii Fighters for the new Smash Brothers games. And it looks like they're going to do more of these in the future. Which is kind of cool. I mean, I don't know if I'll get them. Personally, I don't play with the Mii Fighters that much 
in Smash Brothers. But I'd imagine some people will be uh, very excited to get hold of these costumes and stuff. Well, it's, uh, seeing the creativity of some of the Mii fighters the internet's made up, it would be nice to see some more costumes and maybe see some more new things come out of it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as it stands, there's just going off the top of my head, uh, you have costumes for... You have Link costumes, which is kind of weird because Link's already in the game. <laughs> eh? uh, you have a... Well, someone had to make Lunk. <laughs> Lunk. <laughs> uh, you can also get a Majora's Mask for your me as well. Uh, there's going to be costumes for uh, that resemble X from Mega Man X and Proto Man. That's pretty cool. Great way of sort of getting them in the game without actually putting them in the game, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, co- the costume that most excited me was the Dunban costume from Xenoblade. I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, Xenoblade representing. All my money, yes. Well, like I said, I, pr- I probably won't get it as much as... I did think about it, but again, I don't play with the Mii Fighters, so I probably mm. won't bother. I have seen someone like uh, make Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist on <laughs> the Mii Fighters, which is awesome. I'm pretty sure every possible character has been made with those Mii's. <laughs> probably. Yeah, and... Um... Oh, what else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it in terms of like the costume packs. Uh, you can buy the costumes either individually or in a pack when they come out. Uh, and of course, just like with Mewtwo, you can either get them for just the Wii U, just for the 3DS, or for both. So, again, nice bit of uh, hmm. accessibility there. But the thing, I think the real surprise that nobody saw coming <laughs> was whoosh, Lucas comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lucas, darling, you're back. Was Lucas one of your mains in Brawl? I actually kind of liked him. I thought he was a very interesting character. A little bit tricky to use because um, you had to control his like fireballs manually, but I like that. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I-, I didn't expect to see Lucas come back. I'd have figured that he- yeah. he'd stay dropped, but no. he's uh... And I don't think he's even going to be like an alternate costume for Ness. Like, uh... No, it feels like he's playing differently. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be his own separate character. And... Just like with Mewtwo, Lucas not being in a new Smash Brothers didn't bother me all that much because I didn't really use him all that. I didn't really use him that much in Brawl. But uh, I know there are a lot of people out there who loved Lucas in Brawl. They loved Mother Three, so I'm sure they're very happy. To Did see you him. see the uh, the Ness comic with him and Lucas, and Lucas kind of just disappears? I think I remember you telling me about this. Once. Yeah, the, the the one that was like, okay, this is now depressing. Yeah, but now Lucas is back, and it's and mm-hmm. it's cool. It's great to see him come back, especially because the the way the trailer presents it is like starts off with like Ness just like getting like the shit kicked out of him by all the other characters. As- oh my god! And then oh, Lucas yes. just comes out uh, aptly comes out of nowhere and saves him. PK Thunder. It's like, oh my god! It's kind of cool. We got him back. It's kind of cool it, because as somebody pointed out, it's kind of Lucas. Uh, so, sort of uh, paying Ness back for when Ness saved him in the subspace emissary mode. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. And it's o- like, yay! And the thing is, though, the fact that Lucas has been brought back, it almost makes me wonder, are they going to do more character DLC? Cause, I'd imagine so. Because Sakurai le- gave a statement like a few months ago that Mewtwo may be the only DLC the game would get. So at the t- This is Sakurai, though. Uh, it, w- it wouldn't honestly surprise me if Sakurai was like, okay, Mewtwo's the last thing I'm going to do, we're just going to stop there. And then Nintendo sort of went, Sakurai, listen, we like money, <laughs> and Smash Brothers will make us money. Get back to fucking work. <laughs> we want all the money. I wouldn't be surprised if like Nintendo twisted Sakurai's arm or something. Probably. But, hell, more fighters, I'm always happy with that. Uh, yeah, me too, I personally don't mind it. So, yeah, Lucas will be released in June, I believe. Hmm. And the announcement of Lucas also came along with something called the Smash Brothers Ballot, which is pretty interesting. Oh, yes. Basically, if you go to the Smash Brothers website, you can, fi- you can find a link that will take you to a ballot where you can vote for who you want to be, either as DLC for Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS or for a future Smash Brothers game. And I'm honestly surprised that Nintendo has gone this route, because obviously they're aware of like the constant demand for characters for and characters. Smash. But to actually make this a thing, to actually say to people that they could influence who will appear in the next game is pretty interesting. Of course, there's going to be so many people giving like pretty stupid 
Oh, they already have. I know they already have. They been. already have. I saw an art. I saw an article on Kotaku saying, "Come on, guys, we can finally get Goku in the game." And I just want to go, "No, no fuck off, <laughs> Goku." Just can we just drop that one? Just, just ignore Goku completely. It's not going to happen. Keep dreaming. I think, and that, that's not to say I hate all the troll. I hate all the sort of troll suggestions. Like my one of my mm. favorite ones is somebody suggested, uh, you know. When, on Nintendo Wii games, when you boot up the game, and there's always that sort of warning that says, you know, when you're swinging the remote around, make sure. You're... Oh, the male the, one. The silhouette, the silhouette yeah. of the guy swinging around. Some people have voted for him, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I'm like, okay, to go with the Wii Fit trader, that'd be actually kind of. That's funny. kind of funny, but um, uh... I saw one that I thought I would like this, but I know it would never happen, and that was uh, Phoenix Wright. I've actually vo- I'd, I voted I'd for Phoenix. That. Did you vote for? Phoenix? I voted for Phoenix. I would... I would love that, but I, I'm i doubtful they would. Listen, because, um, James, we'd... if Phoenix Wright could be a playable character in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3... That's what I mean. There I, is I don't no mean... excuse for him not to be in Smash Brothers. That's what I mean. I'm not saying that um, he's not a fighter material. He is, but well, the problem is he's... he's already in another video game franchise. He's not, a, he's not fighter material. He's a defense attorney, but for Smash Brothers... He would be awesome. Don't get me wrong, but the problem is Capcom. Do you really think Capcom would let Nintendo use it? Well, considering that uh, Mega Man's in the game, I really don't see what mm. reasons Capcom would have to not to allow him to be in the game. Well, to be fair, Capcom don't bloody use him. That's why. True, but Phoenix is not all, utilized all that much either. I mean, yeah, we have got a new Ace Attorney coming out. The series isn't dead and gone just yet, but I, I don't see any legitimate reason as to why Capcom wouldn't allow Phoenix to be in the game because let's not forget Ace Attorney was originally a Nintendo exclusive franchise yeah true it's just I'm worried that because he's in another fighting a fighting game franchise already they will be very hesitant to give him up that's my only concern I want it don't get me wrong I really want Phoenix right in the game but it's just I'm not sure if Capcom. I will really do it. don't think Phoenix's appearance in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three could affect that. I mean, Hey Hachi is a Tekken character, yet they allowed him to be in Soul Calibur Two. Calibur. Then, then again, yeah. Namco owns both Soul Calibur and Tekken, so my point's kind of moot. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, Link was put in Soul Calibur Two, and <laughs> and he's a Smash Brothers character. What could happen is money could very easily change hands. Remember, Capcom is a very money grubby company, so it's very possible that money could change their mind. But I'm just, I'm concerned. But I want it. I definitely want Phoenix Wright in the game. I'm just, I'm not convinced Capcom will allow it. You know what's funny? I hope I'm wrong. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know what's funny? Uh, back when Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has come out, I remember seeing so many people saying, oh, I wish Phoenix was in the game. And I was like, <laughs> no, guys, that would just be stupid. He can't fight, so it wouldn't make sense. And then Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out, and they announced that Phoenix Wright would be a playable character in that. And I was so angry, because I was like, oh, really, guys? Then I watched his trailer, and I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> I was an idiot. This is genius. <laughs> So, because of that reason, I am now fully welcoming of having Phoenix in Smash Brothers. Yeah, I, I would love it. Who else have you voted for, by the way, James, if you've voted for anybody else? I haven't voted for anyone else yet, but um, characters I would like... Uh, this I know I've seen a few other people do this. Waluigi I'd like in the game. We've already got Wario. Um, I'm not desperate to have Waluigi as a playable character, but if he, sh- if he manages to be play- become playable, got no problem with it. Hmm. And, I'm sh- and I know a lot of people will be happy about that. As for me, uh, just going off the top of my head, some of the characters I voted for, for various reasons, are <laughs> Ryan and Dunban from Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, mm. Roll from Mega Man, I wouldn't mind seeing her in the game, uh, Bayonetta. <laughs> oh, I would so love that so much. Uh, I also voted for... I, I voted for Ice Climbers, Wolf and Snake, because I wouldn't mind seeing them come back. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, Shantae from. Um, have you heard? Of, have you heard of the Shantae games, James? Yes, Shantae's a like. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen those games. Yeah, a Kickstarter one. Like. Yeah, it was, one of them was a Kickstarter. Yeah, so I I saw like somebody going around saying, "Oh, let's try and get her in the game." And I haven't played the games myself, but I thought about it. and I was like, you know what? She looks like she'd fit the part. She looks like she, she could fit. She'd Smash. fit in a Nintendo game. Yeah, exactly. Easily. Plus, more women in Smash. I'm yeah. always down for that. Uh, off. Oh, who else? 
I've seen a lot of people go against having Bayonetta in because of like what she's like, but then again, if they've had Snake in the games, I think they can fit in well, Bayonetta. Well, Snake, Snake was toned down a little bit. Yeah. Like, obviously he didn't use any guns. He only Except used, for the he, grenade launcher. Yeah, well, he had, yeah, he had, but not an actual gun. Yeah. They, they took that out. They couldn't give him that. But, and I think if Bayonetta... This is obviously hypothetical. If Bayonetta was in Smash Brothers, she would have to be toned down. Mm-hmm. But I still think she can be toned down, but Enough still for Smash. But still keep her original personality. Yeah. Also, let's be honest here. If you've played Smash Brothers for Wii U, Zero Suit Samus is in that game. <laughs> just yep. look at that. Just look at that character model. Palutena does a stripper pole dance as one of her taunts. I think Bayonetta <laughs> may have a chance. I would be all for Bayonetta in that game. I would be all for it just because it would be so ridiculous. Just don't al- just don't alter her physical design. Just put that and then like <laughs> stand her next to fucking Kirby or something. It'd be hilarious. Just and also uh, instead of uh, replacing her guns, just give her laser pistols. <laughs> she uses them in Bayonetta too. Yeah. But again, purely hypothetical. It may not yeah. happen. Uh, also, another character that I voted for, and this was interesting. I think somebody tweeted Phil Spencer, who's like, he's the is he the head of Microsoft or he's like, um, yeah, he's the head of the Xbox division, right? I think. Somebody tweeted at Phil Spencer saying, "Oh, there's a Smash Brothers ballot. Wouldn't be cool if Banjo Kazooie got in, eh?" And he actually tweeted back saying. It would actually be really cool to see Banjo Kazooie yeah. in the next Smash Brothers. So now the and so everybody is like, guys, we may have a chance. I would actually be gr- okay with that. Banjo and Kazooie, that was a great game. But actually, no, Banjo Kazooie or Conquer from Conquer Bad's Fur Day. I th- I like that game. <laughs> I think Banjo Kazooie stands more of a chance. More chance because they're more. I'd I'd say Bayonetta stands more of a chance of getting in the game than Conker. Than Conker, I know, I know. But Conker's Bad Fur Day was just awesome. Just going off real quickly, actually, what did you th- what do you think about Conker's revival in Project Spark? A massive cock tease, to be fair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I was like, oh my god, are we are we actually getting a new game? Oh, we have to make it ourselves. <sighs> I think the John Chon reaction video was pretty apt. Yes, <laughs> that was literally the best reaction. I was like, yep, that that represents everybody. That yeah, that was just a literal cock tease and just really upsetting. Especially as like, I would love more rareware games. And it's just a shame that such a great company is now kind of it- sunk. Well, the thing is, though, people keep saying, like, oh, I wish Rare would make Banjo-Kazooie 3. But as somebody pointed out, most there of the has pe- been. <laughs> well, no, not just that. Most of the people who worked on the original Banjo-Kazooie games are probably not there anymore. No. So it's not even if they did make a new Banjo-Kazooie that was an actual platformer, wouldn't necessarily... It's not the same people working on it, so it might not necessarily turn out to be good anyway, so... Also, we had Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts, and look how that turned out. Yeah... Uh, actually, I've got another one. Um, ca- a few characters I'd like to see. I'd like to see more characters from Fire Emblem. Especially, I'd love it just to have like a Sumia or Sully instead of a uh, Crom. I just just see Crom in the background going, "When am I gonna be in this?" So you're saying names, but I don't know any of those characters. <laughs> Sumia and Sully are kind of like um knights. One's a Pegasus knight and one's a horseman. Okay. Horsewoman. I'd, uh, I'd, I would, I wouldn't mind Crom coming back only because his trailer would be amazing because it would have yeah. like, cr- it could be like Crom finally joins the battle and it, and him saying <laughs> it's about time. I'm, uh, but um, in terms of Fire Emblem characters, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Lin become playable. Hmm. Back when Smash Bros. Four first got announced, I was betting on Lin being one of the new characters, but and he said we got Lucina and Robin, but. Which makes more sense if you think about it, because Awakening. Because that was the latest. Yeah, game. Yeah, Awakening was the latest game. You still haven't played that, have you? No, I don't know if I ever will play Awakening because I play it more for its social interactions between the characters rather than the actual gameplay. And I know well, there's an easy mode, but uh... I, I I do recommend it to you, mate, because you can just turn the permadeath off as soon as you start the game, and you, there's no time limit on the social interaction, and the social interaction goes throughout the entire game. And has repercussions for the second half. Yeah, maybe one day. It's on my what-if mm. list. 
But uh, oh yeah, another character. Sorry, if we, sorry, we keep harping on this. It's basically become Smash Brothers speculation. <laughs> but uh, another character I voted for was Professor Layton. I've seen that going around a few places. That would be interesting. Like, uh, again, a few years ago, I would have said, no, Layton can't be in Smash Brothers. It'd be too silly. But then I'm like, actually, no, he's perfect. Get him in the game, please. <laughs> throwing coins at Mario. This is how you throw coins. It would be great. He defeats his enemies by solving puzzles. <laughs> what would his final smash be? Um, oh, I don't know. There's so much speculation. Uh... <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I, I remember somebody suggested that he um, summons that giant Ferris wheel from the first Layton game to crush everybody. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> be an interesting final smash. It'd be, it'd be great. I've, I'd love to see Layton as a playable character. Be- I mean, Layton's not going to be getting any new games anytime soon, so... No. Plus, he, he is a Nintendo... Well, maybe... Is he a Nintendo exclusive? I think there's been some late... Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the Layton... I'm, there's, like, one Layton game that wasn't for Nintendo dev- Nintendo consoles, but it didn't have Layton in him in it. It was very much a latent game in name only, so... Oh, well, there we go. But, uh, yeah, yeah I've, I think all of the latent games have been on the DS or 3DS. Yeah, so I think Layton stands a very good chance. And the thing is, though, yeah. he, he has fought before. He does know how to fence. Yeah. So it's not entirely unreasonable. But, yeah, oh, yeah, and also... I can see him getting in there. Paper Mario as well. I saw some... <laughs> I, no, I saw somebody come up with an idea for, like, a Paper Mario move set, and I thought, you know what? That's actually a really good idea. Hmm. Like, he could use uh, all his um, uh, partners from the previous games to act as his special moves. I would actually like it if they use some of the gameplay aspects from Paper Mario. They keep swapping perspective just to really mess with the fight. That would be an interesting game mode. Be tricky to pull off and probably be horribly disorientating. Probably, but it's all part of the fun. Mm. But uh, I think maybe we should move off the Smash Brothers ballot yeah. because we'll be <laughs> here forever. Uh, after they did that, they con- they announced some more Amiibo waves. So there's a whole bunch more Smash Brothers Amiibos coming out. Yay, more toys. More stuff that we'll never be able to buy. <laughs> I'm, se- I'm serious. Like, Jigglypuff was released as a like a Target exclusive Amiibo in America. And it was mm-hmm. sold out in two minutes. Yeah. Nintendo, seriously. What the hell? You need to meet... There's a thing called supply and demand, and you're not meeting the demand. <laughs> you're only supplying a tiny little bit. It's... I, f- I feel like Nintendo really needs to work on their whole amiibo thing. Because they... Mm. I, I, I wrote a whole article about this for one of the freelance sites that I work for. And they, they, they say stuff like, oh, we, we want people to understand what amiibos do i'm like okay nintendo one some people don't care what the amiibos do they just want the they just want the figure mm-hmm. some people literally just want the collectible they don't care about using it for any of the games and two you're not selling enough of them you want <laughs> no. to you want to get the point of amiibo across but you're not making it readily available for everybody it's artificial rarity exactly like, they're rare but only because you've made it so well, not all of them are rare. Some of the f- most of the first wave amiibos are still common. They're still very easy to find. It's just the rest. Like I've got a few amiibos now, and I had I had to get my Zelda one from Japan. <laughs> this isn't Pokemon. They don't make some of them so rare you can only get them once. God, can you imagine if they made Pokemon amiibos? Oh my god! <laughs> You'd never catch them all. No. Hey, sorry, couldn't resist. I've been trying to get a Charizard amiibo for ages, but it, like it came up on Amazon, and I'm like, oh shit! I went, I it, there was a it literally on Amazon's website. It said Charizard was available. Add it to basket. I clicked on add to basket, and I got sent to a page saying your basket is empty. Oh, and I'm God. like, what? <laughs> so you're telling some me- of the amiibos need a little bit of work as well, like um, the Link amiibo. Uh, Podquisitions talked about this. It looks really horrible. Like the little stick that's holding him up really? is yellow. Oh yeah, I've seen that. It's. It looks like, as Jim Sterling said, it looks like ass piss. I'll probably still get the Link Amiibo anyway, just so I can unlock so, that oh, extra weapon in Hyrule Warriors. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, I still need to get back to that game. But 
Same here. Another discussion for another time. Basically, <laughs> more more Smash Brothers amiibos coming out. It's still it's going to be a bloodbath like always. And Splatoon as well. Splatoon's getting to that. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. I have we'll a list, James. <laughs> We're sticking to the list. <laughs> um, speaking of Amiibos, there's another thing that Nintendo's doing. There's a thing they're releasing. It's going to be a free download. And it's a good thing it's a free download. Because if they said they were charging for this, I would have just gone, fucking what? Uh, it's called Amiibo Tap, Nintendo's Greatest Bits. Uh, it's, a, it's a free download. If you When you tap one of your Amiibos on your gamepad you will get be given like a random demo of a virtual console game so for example mm. you, you could get a mario amiibo you tap it and you'll be given like some sort of little set little chosen selected portions of super mario world i think it's a bit like the um what is it it's a lot like the the demo bits in smash yeah that's exactly it Play the first hour of each game. Was it the first hour? Or... It was like the first oh, five minutes. Oh, fair enough. Which is, I was way off. Which is fine for like games like Punch-Out! and stuff like that. But I tried doing it. I, I played the uh, Earthbound demo on Smash Brothers recently. <laughs> you get the first... And it's like five minutes. I'm like, okay, so they'll probably plonk me like in the middle of the game or something. But no, you literally play the first five minutes of the game. You don't do anything! The thing in the first five minutes. You walk around a bit and that's it. I didn't get a single fight. I'm like... How is this supposed to advertise Earthbound to me, Nintendo? You don't do anything for the first half hour, let alone five minutes. Yeah, it's stupid. But anyway, uh, so yeah, basically... You know what that's like? What? That's like if um, if they did a demo for Persona 4 Golden and they gave you only the first hour. Yeah. <laughs> In the first hour of Persona 4 Golden, it's only story. You don't do any gameplay. I love Persona 4, but it takes so long, so long for that game to get going. Yeah, it's a great game, but it's just... It's it's like most RPGs, to be fair. Most RPGs are... The first hour and a half is usually the slowest, and then it opens up. True, but still, in like um, in Xenoblade Chronicles, which is my favourite game ever made, in the first hour of that game, you have a prologue bit where you, you take part in the middle of a war, and then after <laughs> that, yeah, it's just the normal humdrum of life. You're still going out and doing things and fighting enemies and talking to people and stuff like that in persona 4 you go to school <laughs> to be fair i was still invested in the persona 4 thing unlike oh, don't kingdom g- hearts 2 don't get me wrong persona 4 is a, obviously you get heavily invested and especially so mm. as the game goes on but its first hour and a half is still really slow really slow but um it's still better than kingdom hearts 2 yeah that tutorial that Ugh. that horrible deterioration to, of two hours that you couldn't skip. Yeah, but um, another conversation for another time again. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the Amiibo Tap thing. It's a neat idea. It's Nintendo trying to come up with more functions for the Amiibos, which is great and all, but again, not, everybody's got, can, no, not everybody can get them. Work on that first, Nintendo. Work on meeting demand, and then we'll talk, okay? Mm-hmm. If I can just get Pac-Man, I'll be happy. I just want Pac-Man. <laughs> Give me my Pac-Man. It's, it's more bizarre as well, because, you know, the Smash... Like, somebody pointed out, you know, yeah, there's a Pac-Man amiibo, but how many games can a Pac-Man amiibo work with? It's not like... There's not like a big Wii U Pac-Man game coming out anytime soon, is there? No. <laughs> oh, God, imagine if you played... um. Uh, Hyrule Warriors and just a huge Pac-Man head kills all your enemies. You know what? That'd be fucking fantastic. That would be that would, just, that would justify Pac-Man Amiibo in all honesty. <laughs> but uh, moving on from that, uh, Nintendo re- then revealed some more details concerning Mario Maker. Mm-hmm. Which is basically their answer to all those fan hacks you can find online. <laughs> yep. This would be... It'd be a nice little thing to get away from that. I still think the fan hacks will happen. That there's no contest the mario that, maker's but... a cool idea but it doesn't really interest me all that much and it is sort of like <laughs> it does seem a bit weird how nintendo nintendo is like very protective of their ips and i get that but like very you know they they say they say it almost does feel like they're saying like oh look we found a way for you to make your own mario levels so now it's okay for you to do it and you'll do it by our terms <laughs> You will follow every single directive. It's like, um, did you hear about that uh, HD remake of Mario 64? Yeah, that got it. Got, it was shut avail- down. Yeah, available for free on browsers, and then Nintendo went no. I, I could. Here's the thing: 
it was using their assets and everything, so they have the right to. Still kind of a bit dickish. It's sort of bad, it's, pu- it's bad publicity on their part, tea. because yeah. we do... Cu- again, they, they do technically have the right to do the that. The right to. But we sort of... Ex- the, the kind of world that we live in today is very much a whole sort of thing where... if like it wasn't making a profit or anything it wasn't making money the- no it was free it was not making any kind of money and it wasn't like you know mario 64 is still available to download on the virtual console mm-hmm. but th- it probably it probably make a lot more sense if it was like a free version a free upscaled version of say super mario 3d world a game that only came out like maybe a year ago yeah but super mario 64 is old very old they- and it looks so good are they making profits off of super mario 64 still very doubtful. And yes, I'm doubtful they're making that much off the virtual version. Exactly. So it does seem it does seem a bit weird. To be fair, well, not to be fair, but to be honest about Nintendo, they're doing a few things that are kind of a bit dickish, like the YouTube thing, especially. Yeah. Which is like it's one of those things of Nintendo. You're doing fantastic on your games, but please, for the love of God, get some better people who are in charge of your like marketing and your people that work with your consumers because you're not doing well on that front even ea is doing better than you on that front and i feel like slapping myself for saying this. those are harsh words james well no here's the thing it's like um ea use a thing i think it's called ronku which is something for, they use for their youtubers which is youtubers make more money they say that like, yeah you can play our games and you make more money for it nintendo's like if you use even just say nintendo we will remove your video or we will basically take all your money away from it it's like really that's no <laughs> no that's not a that's not a good thing i have made the argument before where I, I i've said in the previous episode that if you think that let's plays are affecting the sales of your games then you really need to rethink your game mm-hmm. If anything, they help. It's free advertisement for your game. We, we've we've made this. We spent a whole good hour about this. Oh yeah, before, we've, James, we've so made this before. Let's not uh, repeat. We open old wounds. Yes. Let's uh, <laughs> going going back. Uh, Marry and make. It's a cool idea, but it it doesn't interest me personally. And it is a sort of a, like a Nintendo's way of trying to do something that the internet's been doing for years, but putting it on their terms. Yeah. More it, control. It'd be network. like if Nintendo completely shut down all Nintendo Let's Plays entirely and then released their own Let's Play channel. Well, they kind of did something like that. Well, so, sort sort of, yeah, but not entirely. Yeah. <laughs> they just made they just made it harder for people to make money off of any Nintendo related videos. That's all they've really mm. done. Yeah, but uh, moving on from that, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World is finally been giving a release date, which I'm happy for. Because it looks so adorable. Yoshi's Wii World was one of the first Wii U titles that got announced when the Wii U was still in, like, in development. And then mm. we heard nothing about it we for about years. It. It's like The Last Guardian. We heard nothing about it for ages. And now finally we hear something about it, except Last Guardian. We still know nothing, and that depresses me. Last Gu- wasn't Last Guardian's like official website not renewed? Probably not. <laughs> they keep saying it's in development, but yeah, they whether get- it happens, I don't know. Turns out they've completely forgotten about it for the last five <laughs> years. Oh, don't worry, Last Guardian is still in development, and as soon as the camera's off, the fuck is Last Guardian? We don't know! <laughs> Chucking the pa- Last Guardian is more rarer than the Chupacabra at this point. People opening files going, where's Last Guardian? What's that? <laughs> Half-Life 3. No, that's not it. <laughs> oh my god, they release it and they mix it up with Half-Life 3. That's enough. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> the entire internet just loses its shit. People plug in Last Guardian into the PS4 or something and Half-Life 3 just pops up on screen. It's like, <laughs> <"That's> what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh. going back to Willy World, yeah, it's super adorable. Coming out in this autumn, I believe. And mm. they're also making Amiibos for that as well. At the moment, it's just, it's just three Amiibos, which are three uh, Yoshis made of yarn. That come in three different colours, green, pink, and blue, just going off the top of my head, which are cool. Mm. I want one. They look adorable. Not even necessarily as an amiibo, just because it just looks really adorable. And it's kind of cool that it's not a figure. It's like an actual yarn plush. Yarn. So, yeah, that's great. 
Although, you know what amiibo I'd like as well? What? It, this is related to the Yoshi thing. Um, you know the the newest Kirby game where the Kirby was made of like clay, yeah, so, like claymation. Kirby. I'd love that. What like a clay amiibo? In the clay style, obviously, if they did a clay amiibo, that would not end very well. Yeah, was... <laughs> that wouldn't end well. But yeah, I in get the mean. clay style. But uh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, Yoshi's Willy Worlds. I have to because I, I loved Kirby's Epic Yarn, which uh, Good Feel also develops. They develop mm. Kirby's Epic Yarn, Yoshi's Willy Worlds. But um, I loved Kirby's Epic Yarn because it was like just so cute. It was just a really... I'm noticing a pattern with these guys. Yeah, it was well. It was really char- It was just really charming, just from mm. a visual aesthetic. It was stupidly easy. Like you could yeah. not die in that game. To be fair, I don't think it was ever about the difficulty of the gameplay. It was just about, look how cute this is. Yeah, it was just meant to be a fun platformer. But uh, Yoshi's mm. Willy World does look like it will be a lot more challenging in that regard. Though they have said there will be like a an easy mode where you can like <laughs> give Yoshi wings and he can just fly through the level. Which is okay, but the fact that you can choose that option whilst you're in the middle of playing a level... That's good. It's, again, I'm not going to complain too much about it because it's optional, again, and I've always... Yeah. I've always got angry at people who say, "Oh, this game's not hard." Ergo, it sucks. Or, oh, God. or like I remember when remember when Dark Souls two when that was coming out and they said there's, there was going to be a difficulty option and people were like, no, it's "Dark Souls made to be hard." <laughs> and it's like, guys, did you not hear the word "optional" in that sentence? Mm-hmm. If you don't want it, don't have it. It's like the same thing again with Fire Emblem. When some people complain, saying, "Oh, the permadeath is optional," I was like, guys, if you want the permadeath on, you can just turn it on. It just means new people can come and enjoy Fire Emblem, which is always good. But I don't want people enjoying my video game. <laughs> well, then screw you. It's my game. <laughs> we need to play it by my rules. <laughs> you sound like the nerd from Robot Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I oh. love I love those Robot Chicken sketches Nintendo did at oh, the last E3. Those are great. Where's Mother 3? <laughs> Just more robot chicken things would be brilliant. Yeah, bring them back for next E3, Nintendo. Uh, mm. Okay, now moving on to Splatoon, which, as you said earlier, is getting Amiibos as well. But is anyone going to take bets for how long those, how quickly it takes for those to sell out? Hmm. Because those will go in a flash. Yeah. Splatoon, uh, I, I'm probably not going to play it, but for the, it's great to see Nintendo branching out and actually getting a new IP new for IP. a change. I would probably give it a try. Because I'm not new saying, IP, I'm not I'm saying s- it doesn't look fun, because it looks fun. Hmm. It's and just it, not your cup of tea. Yeah, because it's, it's one of those third-person shooters. It's got a heavy online presence. Uh, hmm. I'm just not particularly into those games. But for that crowd, it looks great. Especially because it's the most imaginative third-person shooter I've seen in mm-hmm. s- for so long. It looks really good. I, I want to see. I want this to succeed. It wouldn't surprise it's me. It's very colourful. It wouldn't surprise me if Splatoon appears in the next Smash Brothers, in yeah. some form. In some form, definitely. Although this and Overwatch are the two shooters I'm looking forward to. Both of them are very colourful and just fun and imaginative. Instead of being we're grim and dark. Yeah. Although it did make me laugh. How I was. Wa- I was watching a uh, a video of like you know those reaction videos of people. St- yeah. Like, yeah there was like a reaction video to the direct and uh these people were and it got to the splatoon thing and then it was like nintendo were talking about uh all the online options and stuff and they pointed out how like nintendo likes to pretend that people who play their games like only play their games and aren't aware of like every <laughs> because if you watch the direct when they there's like, gonna be like a thing there's gonna be a ranked battle mode for splatoon but nintendo di- in the in the trailer nintendo didn't say we're going to have a ranked battle mode. They said, we have a new mode for the game. It's called ranked battle in this mode. <laughs> and they're sort of saying as if like they've, this is like the first, the general pop. We've invented ever. this. Yeah, it's like, it's like, have you ever, we've invented ranked battle. We know what ranked battle is, Nintendo. Calm the fuck down. We've played Call of Duty and all that. We know what it is. <laughs> Don't treat it like we've never heard of it. Oh, Nintendo. They're in their little own bubble. It is a little bit like that. I suppose you could make the argument that they're probably explaining it to an audience that might not have um, played other first-person shooters on other consoles. Because there are those people who only play Nintendo, you know, just like there are people who only play Xbox. 
Mm. True. But, but uh, it'd be interesting to see. Definitely. But uh, moving on from that, they then announced uh, some stuff uh, concerning the Wii U Virtual Console. Uh, there's going to be Nintendo 64 and Nintendo DS games yeah. available for the Virtual Console. Notice a distinct lack of GameCube games, Nintendo. I know. I want more GameCube games. It's like everyone's saying, do GameCube games for Virtual Console. And Nintendo's like, what, who say, what, what, what are they saying? We can't hear you. We say, GameCube <laughs> it's like games. It's like Capcom with Mega Man. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, no one wants Mega Man. We want Mega Man. Nope, no one wants it. Uh, that being said, uh, I do... Uh, some of the Nintendo 64 games that they've announced for the Wii U Virtual Console, you can kind of already get on the Wii Virtual Console. Hmm. Which is sort of like, you're just sort of re-releasing the same thing, guys. But they have, they've said that if you, like, tran- like Paper Mario, I've got that downloaded on the Wii. And you can get it on the Wii U Virtual Console as well. But uh, they've said that if you transfer it over or something, you can get it downloaded for a discount. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, but... I sp- to me, it just makes more sense to just keep it on the on the Wii and just yeah. That being said, though, uh, it's like the uh, but then again, it's also like the PS3, PS4, PSN store rubbish, which is still kind of there at the moment. That being said, though, uh, I am looking forward to the lineup that they've got going because uh, Mario Kart DS is going to be available. And Mario Kart, yeah. Mario Kart DS was a really good game. Like not. Like, some people sort of overlook it, but it was the first game, it was the first Mario Kart to have online features. Yeah, I mean, it was actually pretty good. It was, it was surprisingly good. And, uh, but the one game that really surprised me, uh, Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> oh, yes. That really surprised me. I was not expecting to see that on the Virtual Console. And mm. believe me, I am getting that. Because <laughs> Donkey, Donkey Kong 64 is one of those games I've always wanted to try, but because of, like, my lack of knowledge during my days of playing this N64, I completely mm. passed me by. And now I've got an opportunity to play it. And I know Donkey Kong 64 is like, kind of got a bit of a bad reputation because of how much stuff there is to collect in that game. Yeah. I've heard of that. But I, I, I kind of, it, to me it's almost like, ooh, that means there's <laughs> loads of things to get. Loads of things to do. I haven't played like a proper collectathon in so long and I, 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 I kind of, like the challenge mm. it's also just a sad thing that the n64 doesn't work on a lot of modern tvs which yeah. is a real shame i've been meaning to try and set up my old n64 just to see if i can get it working but mm. i don't know if that's ever going to bear to get, get that's ever going to work or anything from what i've been hearing it will only work on like box tvs it, it, more older generation it won't work on the newer ones mm. which is definitely disappointing and very upsetting. It's like this is, this is our childhood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Nintendo sixty four and Nintendo DS games will be available for the Wii U Virtual Console. Uh, there's only only a few games been announced for it so far, but you never know. It'll broaden out. Hopefully, so we'll it'll broaden out. Hopefully, we'll get some good gems, and hopefully, this will lead to GameCube games coming out for the Wii U Virtual hint, Console. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. No, I mean, no, I mean. Um, after that, it was very much to then became a indie showcase. Hold Wait. on, haven't we missed Fire Emblem? Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, we're we'll getting to that. Good. Don't good. worry. Calm down. <laughs> uh, More Fire Emblem. It's just you going like, I want to talk about Fire Emblem. <laughs> get there, Jesus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a it was an indie showcase after that, and uh, I don't really follow the indie scene. So, hmm. do you know anything about most of the indie games? That were listed, James. Not for the for the Nintendo. I'm more PC ground. Yeah. So, uh, well, a lot of these games are probably available on the PC as well. Probably end up like Octodad. I know. I have Octodad's. Octodad's good. I know. I am aware. Bloody infuriating. I am aware of Octodad's popularity. Didn't I? I can't remember if they mentioned it on direct. They're putting Binding of Isaac on what I think on the 3DS. Are they? I think so. I think I've been hearing that they are going to put it on there. Oh. But th- they've had to change a little bit, which kind of annoys me. Because they didn't put it on there originally because of the heavy Christian themes. The anti-Christian themes. Because it obviously Binding of Isaac is meant to be like a gruesome retelling of the Isaac story. Okay. And it's basically taking the mick out of this fundamentalist Christian. 
who's your mother. And apparently they've changed it to Scientologist for the Nintendo version. Really? Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I've seen gameplay of Binding of Isaac, and there is so much sim- symbolism in that game. That's a- I know. Changing it to Scientology then makes the symbolism make no sense. Let me just make sure this is definitely a thing, and I've not just been hearing Bull- Yeah, That's have- what I've been hearing. I have not heard anything about Binding of Isaac coming to the 3DS. Yeah, Binding Rise of Rebirth, Reborn on 3DS, Wii U, and Xbox One. Okay, well, I don't. I, is... They didn't mention it in the directs. So I'm pretty sure I don't remember hmm. that. Oh, hang on. The it is coming, but the uh, the stuff they said they've changed is was a, just an April Fool's gag. Oh, damn you, Edward McMillan! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Edward McMillan is a massive troll. You just Damn got you. trolls, James. I got, I got, I got April Fools. Damn it! <laughs> God's sake, James! Surely on April Fools, as soon as you go on the internet, don't believe anything you see. At least I was half right. I nearly fell for an April Fools joke, actually. Which one did you fall? For? Uh, I saw, a th- I saw a for. thing that said uh, Sonic 06 was getting remastered for the PS4 and Xbox One, and I was like, really? <laughs> and then I went, wait, no. What day is it today? It's April, oh, fu- it's it's April 1st. It's so obviously an April Fool's. The thing is, I, was, I wouldn't usually believe it, but because it was binding of Isaac, I was like, oh my god, yes! <laughs> yeah, you sort of... Uh... <laughs> and in a way, oh. At least I was half right. I think the best April Fool's gag I saw was when uh, Capcom released a new trailer for the next Ace Attorney, but all the characters were dogs instead. <laughs> oh god. And I was like, okay, that's just silly. But um, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of that, it, yeah. That, but that might mean that Isaac from Binding of Isaac might be in Super Smash Brothers. No, which would be horrifying. Will never happen. <laughs> that would be the most horrifying thing ever. It's like, yeah, kids, look at this. Oh my god! He's an assist trophy. He shows up and he just vomits blood everywhere. <laughs> That's the least of the things that happens. But uh, so yeah, a whole bunch of indie games coming out don't really know all that much about them the only ones that really got any focus were octodad uh, another mutant muds game and something called the adventures of pip which kind of looks cool because uh, you play as like a square you... pixel that can hmm. sort of change form yeah which is kind of cool but Have uh you played mutant muds because i keep hearing about it everywhere and i've never actually given it a try mutant muds is a i played a demo of the first 3ds game and it yeah. looks it looks really good it's it's fun to play. It's got a great thing where you can jump between the foreground and the background, but it's really hard. Hmm. That's fair enough. Uh, it's really it's very much for the kind of players that love a good challenge. <laughs> In fact, the the new Mutant Muds for Wii U is called Mutant Muds Super Challenge. Oh, fair enough. Uh, there's also going to be a, a redone version of Don't Starve for the Wii U as well. I don't know much about that game except for the fact that it's for a survival a survival game. Survival game with survival horror elements yeah that's really good games mind you but mm, probably stick to the pc version for that one fair enough but uh moving on from that was a was a trailer that i i did not see coming if in, in, oh. fa- in fact i want to i just want to like sort of give you an idea of exactly what was going through my head as this trailer was playing like it starts off with atlas appearing Atlas being <laughs> oh, I know what we're talking about. Atlas now. being the developers of the Persona series, and I saw Atlas and I got excited because I'm like, "Ooh, is there, a, is there going to be a Persona for the Wii U?" And then the trailer starts and we see the artwork of the characters, and I just go, "You're not Persona." <laughs> and so the trailer goes on, and then the J-pop hits. All this flashing imagery. It's so. It's the only way to describe it is it's so anime. Yeah, the most anime. St- stuff i had ever seen it was so bright and colorful and as uh monsters and teenagers and teenage girls with big boobs because to be expected because it's anime <laughs> and there was a school and there was people talking and it was all very quiet and i'm like okay and the, and, the th- and the funny thing is that as the trailer went on i went from being this is not persona to i actually can't kind of want this yeah <laughs> and then it ended and then uh bill trinan who's like uh, one of the heads of Nintendo of America, I believe, or he, he's he's a high he's a high up in Nintendo. Hmm. He then said, "We thank you so much for your patience." Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire Emblem is coming out, and I went, 
That's yes. Shin Megami Tensei cross Fire Emblem? Mm-hmm. And I was just like... <laughs> it feels like... Because Shin Megami Tensei cross Fire Emblem is another game that was first announced for the Wii U when the Wii U was still in development. And we have heard nothing... Nothing. ...for so long. Not even, like, details or images. All we got was a concept trailer that said, Shin Megami Tensei cross Fire Emblem is in development. That's mm-hmm. literally all it said. We got nothing else. And now all of a sudden we got... a. A trailer showing off the actual game. I've got to be honest. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking I, forward to it. I'm not even. I a was fa- skeptical when I first saw it because don't get me wrong. I love Persona and I love Fire Emblem, but they're two completely different well, styles it, of RPG. This isn't Persona. This is Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah, because Persona is a spin-off of Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei. It's just that Persona got so popular over here in the West that some people aren't really aware of Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not a fan of either franchise, so it kind of surprises me of how much I want this game. Though mm. it's kind of hilarious because a lot of there are a lot of Shin Megami Tensei fans that are going like, "This isn't Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> Where, where's all the demons?" <laughs> I was about to say Shin Megami Tensei. I played um, one of them on the free, the one on the 3DS, which was like um, a co- almost a collector form for demons. Yeah, which was a good game. It was a good game. I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but it was a good game. That cross with Fire Emblem will be interesting. Yeah, because they've said that characters from both Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem would be appearing. Yeah. So it makes me wonder if there's like not going to be any original characters. They're all going to be characters taken from either franchise to sort of reworked into an alternate yeah. universe. I'm also doubtful we're going to get ones from Fire Emblem Awakening. I'm going to take a guess and say it's going to be ones from the older games. So we're probably going to get Marth and Ike. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Give yeah, me a, I'd give... be fine with that. Thing, thing is that again, I'm not familiar with either franchise, so mm. I'm sort of going into this with like expectations for it to just be fun. I'm not expecting it to be a Shin Megami Tensei game or a Fire Emblem game. Mm. It still surprises me with the direction they took because I'd imagined it would have um, been like set in some sort of medieval style world, but no, My it's Fire Emblem, yeah, yeah, but no, it's very much like a modern day <laughs> characters from Fire Emblem appear in modern times, yeah. Well, I have heard. I heard uh, from some. I have heard that somebody said that uh, they were worried that the game would be too much of one and not enough of the other. But yeah. We, but judging from the trailer that we've seen, they feel like it's a good balance. I'm just mm. going off of their opinion on it, so I'm guessing. To be fair, we still don't know a whole lot. We don't know a lot of details. Details are still very light on the ground at this point. Well, obviously. But um, yeah, I'm hoping we get a good balance of both. Um, hopefully they'll stick with what they did with Fire Emblem Awakening. Have the permadeath, but optional. If there's going to be permadeath to begin with. Well, considering that's a major, major staple of the Fire Emblem games, I'd imagine it will be in there. But again, as I said, with Awakening, op- make it optional. So new people can come in and they don't have to worry about the permadeath. But everyone who likes the permadeath can come in and play with the permadeath. Well, we'll have to wait and see because all we've mm. got, all we've got, is a trailer. That's all we've yeah. got. Got like no, no details. <laughs> no otherwise. details at all. So, but the trailer was nice. The trailer was nice. It was a lot of fun. And I've, so, I'm, de- I'm going to keep my eye on it. Definitely. Uh, after that, they then also confirmed that a uh, Fatal Frame will be coming for the Wii U. Yes, um, I'm not a fan of Fatal Frame, but I am aware of the fact that the series has always been rooted in Japan and that the the western fans have always struggled to get a hold of the damn games yeah but here's the thing uh the fatal frame games always been obviously with the camera and with the free uh the i need to say 3ds then with the the wii u and its controller the big block yeah pack, it's like that would be so good exactly so it, it makes sense so good but yeah originally it was going to be they weren't going to release it and my only concern is i've seen a few like screens of the newest fatal frame and i was kind of like Ugh. like um it felt like they did a few things that were kind of like okay guys this is kind of a bit sleazy like they gave al- alternate costumes and i use quotation marks on the costumes part of that mm-hmm. because they were essentially lingerie mm. it's like uh and also ayane from dead uh dead or alive was in there for some inexplicable reason <laughs> Just... I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I suppose it could be worse. It could be made by the guys who made Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball, like Other M. Uh... Uh... 
Yes, with our long reigning games involving a female protagonist, let's give it to the guys who made a beach volleyball game. Let's be honest, that was the one thing that Other M got kind of got right. <laughs> Everything else, yeah. But um, actually, I will say when uh, they bef- when they got to the announcement of Fatal Frame for Wii U, it was like a bit where like uh, Bill Train was just talking, and then the sc- and then obviously the screen did that sort of st- static flickery thing, mm-hmm. and like you saw a face in there. And he was like, uh, okay. And for, I'm not going to lie, for five seconds I was like, is Five Nights at Freddy's coming to the Wii U? <laughs> That's what I thought it was going to be. Oh, I thought that God. was the announcement. But no, it's Fatal Frame. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> oh my God, imagine that Fatal Frame and Five Nights at Freddy's has a cameo in it. That that would be random. Very random. I, uh, I, I couldn't see that happening. I think... No, it was... <laughs> I I could I I mean like um uh, Five Nights at Freddy's ever appearing on any other console I couldn't see that happening. Five Nights at Freddy's does not appeal to me whatsoever in the slightest. No. Though like obviously I it's... think it's interesting for what it is, like I... a five dollar little scarathon. But it's I kind of more like its that. world. I kind of like its world building. That's about yeah. it. Though I do like the fact that the uh, the guy who made all three games is like given so much of the money, uh, money he made away to charity. To charity, yeah. Which is pretty cool on his part. I did love the Honest trailers for the third game. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, uh, it's it's funny. It's a good one. As most of the Honest trailers are, to be fair. Mm. Well, um, back to the Nintendo Direct. Uh, after Fatal Frame, they showed off a trailer for Box Boy, which is like a little puzzle game for the 3DS. Uh, kind of hard to describe it. It's kind of like a puzzle platformer kind of thing where you play as like a box but you can like sort of alter his shape so that you can ba- basically turn him into a Tetris piece to sort of help him get through puzzles and stuff hmm. seems like a neat little idea but uh, not really not really much to talk about there which is kind of a shame because <laughs> if it, you, you almost want to give more attention to the lesser known titles but there's so hmm. little to sort of talk about it's sort of like as a Whenever, but whenever there's like a new big title coming out, suddenly oh, there's everything to talk about. Talk about, but then you got these ones. Also, it's um puzzle platformers, like mm, not my field. But. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so there's that, and then after that was a uh, Pokemon Rumble World, which is another free to play game, sort of following off from Pokemon Shuffle. Hmm. Uh, have you, do you know what the Pokemon Rumble series are, James? I keep hearing about them. I haven't actually played any of them. Uh, it's probably not worth your time, in all honesty. Because <laughs> no, because I, pl- I, I played I played one of them for the 3DS, and I got to like the last world, and I just sort of got bored of it. So I just sort of gave it away. That's fair enough. Yeah, it's be- and again, it's also again, it's free to play. Is the new one is free to play, so Ugh. it's almost like okay, just going to avoid that. Although saying that, I have heard that. Um... This is going a little bit off topic, but kind of not. Um, Final Fantasy Square Enix have released a new free-to-play game, and apparently it's actually not bad, as opposed to all the bravest. <laughs> so, the kindest thing anyone can say to a free-to-play game, it's, <laughs> it's not, not that all the bad. bravest. It's not like all the bravest. <laughs> that was the biggest bullshit game ever. I use game in quotation marks. Would you consider all the bravest to be even worse than 13? You know what? I'm. This might surprise you. Yes, but it was, was worse than thirteen. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest, in all honesty, because I've just heard, <laughs> I just heard nothing. I mean, even thirteen has its fans. Yeah, I don't think I've I heard. Could... <laughs> I don't think I've heard of a single person defending all the bravest. Bravest, no. All the bravest was basically a money grabbing shill. Thirteen was just terrible, but at least it was an actual game. <laughs> bare bones at best but still a game uh, all the 13 fans are going James is being unfair to 13 again <laughs> to be f- it's going to get to the point where it's going to be like someone's going like, <laughs> to in like 10 years from now someone's going to walk into a room and go so guys how about that Final Fantasy 13 huh? and everyone's going to go dude it's been 10 years <laughs> get over it we've kind of moved on we've got Final Fantasy 15 now and it's fucking awesome <laughs> Oh god, I hope. I will say this if, though. I've I've seen. Did you see the thing for the summons? Uh, yes, I did. 
Oh my god, Rama looks awesome. I've heard a friend of mine got the Final Fantasy XV demo, and if his description of it is anything to go by, Final Fantasy XV is pretty much set to be a good game. I hope so. Although it's still disappointing, there's no female playable characters. Well, appara- that's a little apparently I heard somewhere that uh, that might be changed. I hope so. Unless that was an April Fool's joke, I can't remember. Oh god, I hope not. I'm I, gonna... I, hope, I hope they bring in a f- female playable character. just going to quickly look it up, see if I can still find it. <laughs> turns out you were April Fool'd as well. Uh, it turns out I was April Fool'd as well. Yeah. <laughs> April Fool! Uh... I hope it's good. Apparently, I've also heard that um, Final Fantasy Type Zero is also very good. Uh, I, I want to give that a play. I definitely want to get it as well. When I eventually get a PS4, I'll definitely get Type Zero. Though I've heard it's like gameplay wise is great, S- story wise, not so not much. Not so much. Yeah, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. To be fair, the only game that's really wowed me for a while was Square Enix. Is the one game that's more Final Fantasy than any of the games they've released. Yet they didn't want to call it a Final Fantasy because they didn't think people would buy it. And oh look, people bought it. It was called All the Bravest. Uh, Bravely Default. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck! No, different game! (laughs) Bollocks! Bravely Default, that's what it was called. Which is getting a sequel soon and I can't wait. Bravely the second, right? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh god. I'm never going to live that down. But yeah, that that was more Final Fantasy than any of the other Final Fantasy games that Square Enix has released in a while, and they didn't want to release it as a Final Fantasy game. And it's like, guys, this is a Final Fantasy game. The only thing I didn't like about it was that the script was pretty wonky. Yeah, I've, the, I've heard uh, one complaint about Bravely Default's plot is that there's a it does that sort of storytelling thing where the villain's like you have no idea what you're doing do you and the hero's like wait what are we doing and the villain goes well i'm not gonna tell you so the hero's (laughs) like oh we'll just keep doing what we've been doing then um it was it wasn't just that there was another thing that was kind of annoying um you get to a point in the game and you think all right we're going to be facing the final boss and then it brings in a time travel mechanic and you go right back to the beginning of the game and we all know how much James hates time travel. <laughs> I don't hate time travel. I still like, I still like older Doctor Who, but just I don't like it when it's used in that way. Like if it's like, oh yeah, you're going back in time now. It's like, no, don't do that. This game had a really good pace up until now. Now this it kills the pace completely. The only good thing about it is you go back and you basically massacre all the old bosses who were tough last time. There's because all the bosses are cakewalk at this point. There is something really satisfying about fighting previous bosses and like completely decimating them. Yeah. It's like um it's a perfect example, it's like Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. When you had enemies who could kill you in like a move, and then when you got better and you got more gear and everything, you came back, it's like, yeah, now I can kick your arse all over the field. But, uh, uh, yeah, I found that uh, article I was mentioning, and, yeah, it's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, the Final Fantasy XV director, Hajime Tabata, has actually said that it's possible that a female character will join the party as a guest. So it'll be a guest a party ge- member. Oh. oh. I... <sighs> nah, I'm still... Sorry, I still like some of the female protagonists, and some of the female protagonists in Final Fantasy were the best it's just a little bit sad that we're not having that but if it means we actually if we get a good game still then i'll be happy well it's not like the game's not gonna have any women in it at all no we have we that would be weird that would be weird it'd be like wait what (laughs) unless that was part of the plot oh no it turns out that like there's no women in final fantasy 15 except for one and it's lightning she just randomly she randomly pops up and then becomes the main character for No. no reason Oh, God, no. Square Enix, hire me. (laughs) No, don't. I could destroy any credibility you've managed to regain. They didn't regain that much. I don't know. I reckon if Final Fantasy XV turns out to be good, I think... I will sing its praises. That will be sort of like making... That will sort of make up for... Here's the thing. People think when I rip into thirteen so much, they think that I hate the series. It's like, no... I want to sing their <laughs> praises again, but I'm not going to give it to a shitty game. <laughs> oh, God, I hate this game. So you hate the series? 
No, I hate this game. Game. Hell, people dislike 10 and I can still see there's good things about 10. 10's still a Final Fantasy game. Hmm. It's got tons of problems, but it's still a Final Fantasy game. Also has anima, which means it's awesome. <laughs> which is basically Final Fantasy X's version of Knights of the Round Table. I've seen anima. It's so cool. It's so just nightmare. That's what it, it is. It's so yeah, nightmare. it's a, it's nightmarishly awesome. It's That's... basically it is Knights of the Round from Final Fantasy VII. What like super OP? Very open. Basically, Knights of the Round was basically a summon spell where you basically had like S- Arthur and all of his knights basically hit this your enemies over and over and over again. Yeah, I've I've, se- I've seen that summon. So cool. Uh, I actually want that summon back, but I yeah, you, you had Arthur, Sir Lancelot, Sir Galahad, Sir mm. Robin, and Sir not appearing in this film. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. Had to be done. But uh, mm-hmm. getting back on track to the Nintendo Direct discussion after that brief Final Fantasy tangent. <laughs> uh, Always a problem with me. Next thing they talked about was uh, Puzzles and Dragons, which is coming over here. Uh, one thing that's really cool about Puzzles and Dragons is the fact that it's going to be two games in one, where you'll get mm. Puzzles and Dragons Z, which is a sort of remastered version of the latest Puzzle and Dra- Puzzles and Dragons game that was released in Japan for mobile devices, which was also free to play apparently, but this one won't be. Oh. So that's already a plus. But it will also come with a uh, Mario version of Puzzle and Dragons. Which I guess oh. I guess is basically their way of trying to get people into playing it. Because if you go to the general audience, here's Puzzle and Dragons Z. Would you like to play it? No, not really. Well, here's Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Edition. Oh, okay, that's I'm interested now. <laughs> Mario sells everything. It looks interesting, and a, there should be a demo for the game out later this month, I believe. So I'll definitely I'll give, give it a try because it definitely sounds interesting. Puzzles yeah, well, and dragons. It's like a mixture of puzzles and RPG. So yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. That's uh, right my alley. After that, and I'm surprised that this is a thing. Uh, Attack on Titan: Humanity in Chains. <gasps> oh my god! Yes, it's coming for 3DS. They're and actually localizing it. It's that, coming out soon. Yes, they're actually localizing it. Uh, basically, you play as one of the survey corps and fight titans it's a simple premise and not only that the first two episodes of attack on titan will be available on the nintendo anime channel which Mm -hmm. is a free download thing you can get on the 3ds where you can watch uh nintendo related anime like you can watch episodes of the pokemon anime on there uh episodes of the kirby anime on there and uh, attack on titan will be added and i'm sort of watching this going i'm watching what this trick this sort of them advertising i'm thinking this is cool and all but it's kind of hard for me to picture Attack on Titan on <laughs> Nintendo. Because Nintendo's family friendly. Yeah. <laughs> Attack on Titan is not. No. <laughs> like, I'm what. <laughs> hey, kids, let's watch Attack on Titan. Oh my god! Like, I'm, wa- I'm sort of watching the, uh. The, like, they show, like, clips from the first two episodes, and they, and you can. They show a clip of, uh. That Colossus Titan. Like. <laughs> putting its hand on the wall and raising its head and I'm sort the of like... The Colossus Titan already looks creepy as hell because he's just basically a no, skinned man. It's just a... It's just a... No skin. It's just a, the muscles. That yeah. Are, yeah. Like, so I'm... I'm just... <laughs> I'm just looking at this and they, say, and they say like, you know, you can play as a member of the Survey Corps and join friends to hunt Titans and I'm like, when you put it like that it sounds fun. But I've watched <laughs> the anime. It's not fun. It never ends well. Like episode four, when Eren and his group go and attack the Titans, and most of them die. Yeah, I I really wish they'd well they should have advertised it as Attack on Titan the game, all of the Titan hunting, but none of the psychological or physical trauma. <laughs> Perfect. Speaking of Attack on Titan, have you watched the film teaser? Oh, what for the live action film? Mm hmm. I did see it. Titans what still did you think. Titans still look creepy. Yes. We've only seen a couple... We saw a brief glimpse of one of the normal Titans before we could see its face, and then we saw the Colossus, and it's like, holy shit. <laughs> well, it's being made in Japan, so obviously it's going to be decent at least. Yeah. If, I... it w- if it was like, you know, Hollywood's version of Attack on Titan, then we'd be a bit, okay. Mm. Um, Can you imagine that? Attack on Titan, directed by Michael Bay. 
Oh, fucking no. <laughs> the Titans would just explode for no St- reason. Starring Shia LaBeouf as Eren Yeager. Oh. Oh. Hollywood, th- hire me! To, to be fair, it doesn't sound that like much better, because I've... I can't remember... I think they got rid of him, which is good. I think the original director was going to be the guy who did Evangelion. Oh yeah, you don't like Evangelion. You, I am so happy that's not the case. It's <laughs> because weird, Eren I... Jaeger would be turned into a wimpy bugger. Everywhere I go, I keep hearing like, oh yeah, Evangelion's great, Evangelion's awesome, you should totally watch Evangelion. And then I just talk to you and you're like, oh! Screw that anime! It's... Well... I don't get why it's good. Like people say, oh, but it's got great robot battles. Oh yeah, because anime doesn't have great robot battles. Oh wait! I've, I've heard some people say Evangelion's great, except for the last two episodes. I'd go so far as to say most of the damn series. It's There's a couple of interesting fights. That's what I would give Evangelion. And it's well animated for its time. Like, really good animation. Um, But I can understand why people like it. I don't agree with you, but I understand why you like it. But I will never understand why people like End of Evangelion. Because it is absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. And also... I think I've got an idea for a movie commentary. Oh my god. (laughs) Um, You know what? I would do that. And I would literally just want to do it just to see your reactions, Michael. It would just... The whole commentary (laughs) would just be you going on about how shit it is. And I'm just... And that me just in complete silence. Because I wouldn't know what the (laughs) fuck's going on. That, and also, I guarantee it, there will be moments that will literally make you go, What the hell? <laughs> Pro- probably, because I won't have watched Evangelion, so it'll make even less sense. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Even if you watch the series, there will be moments go, What does this mean? Just going back to Attack on Titan real quick, when the fuck is season two coming out? Not until next year. Christ. Um, I Cause... can kind of understand why, because they want to make sure they have enough the manga i get okay. that because the manga's still going but the reason i hate waiting so long is because i'm on tumblr and so much has been sport for me already <laughs> oh tag your posts with spoilers damn it oh the, what's been the latest thing that's sported for you, you won't well, have, for well it's been ages for a while but like i t- i know uh, the identity of certain characters now or at least mm. i think i do and if I think they're right, and that angers me because they would have been such good twists I wouldn't have seen coming. And I like <laughs> being surprised. Uh, yeah, I, know I hate it's it like, when that happens. I know it's ironic considering the only reason I watched Attack on Titan in the first place was because I read a spoiler and was like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Which spoiler was that, by the way? Well, I don't want to say it because it's a spoiler. But... <laughs> um, true. Okay, I'll just... Real quick, spoilers for Attack on Titan. Cover your ears. Okay. Cover your ears for the next 10 The seconds. spoiler that made me watch Attack on Titan was when I found out that Eren turns into a Titan. Ah, fair enough. Because it, ga- it, it sort of made me think of a theory that the Titans were powered by humans. That was my theory. I now no longer think that, due to having actually watched the anime. That's the only reason really? why... I'll be honest, the reason why I want to keep watching Attack on Titan is more for its story. Yeah, I don't think Attack on Titan's got that great of a cast, with the exception of um, Jean Kerstein. With the exception of him, Hanji, Hanji. <laughs> Sorry, who she? Oh, she's the scientist lady, right? Yeah, the awesome one. Yeah, well, but actually, like, you gotta admit she's awesome because she's every a bit... other character's like, oh my god, we're all gonna die, and then you just got Hanji. It's like, Yahoo! well, it makes me feel a bit concerned for a psychological being. The fact she oh, takes... she's insane. She's insane. <laughs> and that's why I love her for it. But Speaking no, I lo- of which, she's in the movie, and I'm like, I've seen who sh- who's playing her, I'm like, yeah, that's perfect casting. But, um, yeah, the, 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 the cast of Attack on Titan, uh, def- definitely not my favourite cast. I can't remember many of their names. I like some of them. Um, aside from Jean, I like um, Sasha, I think her name is. The side characters are more interesting. The one who eats the potato. I like her. Uh, no, here's a little thing. She was actually meant to die. Was she? I think she was actually meant to die in the part of episode four. Oh she... God! That was meant to. That she was meant to die there, but then um, she got very popular. Yeah. And so he decided to keep her alive, which I'm very happy with. 
That's a rarity. Yeah. A character <laughs> surviving? <laughs> He went, oh, people like her. Okay, I'll keep her alive. Well, you know what they're going to do? They're going to keep her alive long enough so that they can kill her later. Yes. (laughs) Oh, how many characters do you think are going to survive this series? I reckon at least one. (laughs) There has to be one character who will stay alive by the end of it. And and it's sure as hell ain't going to be Eren. No. I actually don't think Armin's going to survive, to be fair. I'd actually put Armin at the top of my survivors list. (laughs) I reckon I like he's getting braver. Armin was such a shit in the first few episodes. I couldn't stand him. And then he got good. (laughs) Get good, son. Get good. No, I hated him because he spent the whole first half of the series going, I'm so weak. I can't do anything. Oh, you're going to absolutely love Shinji Ikari. You're going to love him. I can't stand like the the self pity. <laughs> I just can't stand. I hate it when characters go. <laughs> not necessarily. Oh, I'm so weak. I can't do anything. But oh, I'm so weak. These guys are so much better. Than... <laughs> no, that's the thing that pissed me off the most about Armin. He it wasn't the constant whining and the fact that he he didn't think highly of himself. Because I know that there are some people who exist like that. There are some people who mm. don't think they're that great. I get that. But it angered me so much that he kept on going about how great an Eren and Mikasa were. And that's, oh, I don't know why they're friends with me. I'm like, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> These two are the only people <laughs> looking out for you. And now you're like, oh, why are they friends oh. with me? You, 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 you're just being an ignorant brat, you are. Michael, you are going to love Shinji Ikari. Because oh. <laughs> uh, you know why? Is Shinji called... Ikari is Armin turned up to 11. Ugh. And without any of the good things. And he's that, that way in all of the series and all of the movies. I'm going to laugh so hard if I ever watch Neon Genesis Evangelion and I go, what the fuck are you talking about? This show's amazing. <laughs> Oh, the thing I keep getting is people going, you just don't get it because it's deeper than you. I'm like, oh, please shut up. It's not deep. It thinks it's deep and it's not. Just because somebody doesn't like something doesn't necessarily mean they understand it. Mm -hmm. If anything, they do understand it. And that's the reason they don't like it. it. (laughs) Yeah, I can see where he was trying to go with certain things. It wasn't good enough. Like, also, just because someone has a message doesn't mean it's always working out. It's like, um, you know that um, Cad Icarus video, the one we did with the um, the LSD one? Yeah. He got so much backlash for that from people saying, oh, you just didn't get it. It's like, you do realise that just because it has a message doesn't mean that it's perfect. What was there to get? Yeah. <laughs> apparently, there was, apparently, when you get the game, there's a booklet that explains everything. Two things. One, if it takes a booklet to explain everything, you failed. And two, again, just because there's a message doesn't mean it's automatically great. Or that it's presented well. Mm -hmm. Or that it's truly deep and profound. It's uh, just people, people. Okay, I feel like like we've got off way off. Yeah, (laughs) we've... we've Delved far into Evangelion territory. Rain back to the original thing. Uh, Okay, so yes, Attack on Titan game coming out for the 3DS later this year. Uh, After that, there was some talk about Codename Steam. Like, that's Mm. getting an update soon, and there's going to be, like, tournaments for it. Game's still not out in Europe, but uh, okay. Yeah, I've got to be honest, when I first heard of Codename Steam, I was like, alright, this sounds interesting. And I played it, and I was like, this is good, and it's interesting, but not as good as I thought. It, Wait, uh, have it you played actually, a demo? Yeah. Okay. It plays a bit like a Valkyria Chronicles, actually. But mm, I, w- I thought it was going to be something else, and it wasn't. Definitely got some cool ideas. Like it does. That oh, thing, definitely. It, it takes that thing. It does that thing where it takes familiar characters and puts them in a whole new scenario, yeah. which I love. Yeah, that's good. But just like apparently you've got the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz as one of your party members. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool. This is so good. But the, Nintendo also said that they're going to restock on Martha Amiibos since the Fire Emblem Amiibos are compatible with Codename Steam. Ah, good. Which is like, okay, yeah. Can you 
do that with all the other ones, please? <laughs> Can we please have some more? I'm pretty sure Robin and Lucina have already sold out, and they haven't even been released yet. Oh, Jesus. But, no. uh, so yeah, that's Codename Steam. Uh, the Street Past Me Plaza is getting an update. Oh, right. It's, it's going to get two new games for it. It's called uh, Ultimate Angler and Battleground Z. Don't really interest me. I don't really play the Street Pass. Oh, it's bad to say. I The only Street Pass games I play are the ones that first came with the system, which are the puzzle one, which I love hmm. because puzzles, and uh, Street Pass Quest, which is it's, it's fun. Yeah. I must admit, I think I played them on the first day I got the DS in, and I never played them again. Really? I, I never got into them. I'll probably well, give them a try later on. I really but... love the puzzle one, because uh, that's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I get what you yeah. mean. There's also going to be a Street Pass Me Plaza premium thing, which I'm not... can't quite... I, it's like, you can save certain Mies and see their birthdays or something. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I I just sort of blanked out for that part of the video. I, was like, <laughs> uh... I don't care about this, so I'm just going to shut my brain off. <laughs> and then after that, there was another trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. And I'm I'm just going to repeat myself here. Get Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii. It makes more sense. I actually hope that they release it on the virtual console. Really? I'm, doubt- I'm doubtful they would. It's been three years since the game came out. It's not going to get released on the virtual console. I know, but I I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I feel like that's what Nintendo should have done. Don't do a three-day remake of the game. Just re-release Release the game it. on the... Even if it's on the original Wii. Yeah. Just, like, get more copies of it. Because... I'd buy it. I mean, I guess, buy I guess you could argue that's what they're doing with Zenbe Chronicles 3D, trying to make it more accessible again. But mm. And I've heard that the game plays well. But, but you have to get a whole new 3DS. Yeah, you've got to get a whole new console for it. And also, I don't think it translates well to a handheld. It's a big game. Mm. It's meant to be played on the big screen. I've also heard that the graphics, are, while decent, are definitely... A noticeable downgrade from. I will the defend Wii. the graphics on the original Xenoblade Chronicles to oh, my yeah. dying day. Yeah, some people say, "Oh, they look shit," and I go, well, "You know what? It's the Wii, mm. and they no, no, look no, ama- They look great for Wii. It looks good on the Wii. I mean, like they, it. You can tell that it's toned down for the 3DS. Yeah, I've like I've seen images of it, and oh god, yeah, then yeah, yeah, it looks ugly as hell. Also, That's I definitely swear, problematic. The bottom screen, I swear, does bugger all. <laughs> like there's, Probably not. There's like a map. There's like just a map, and that's it. Oh God! In fact, no. Yeah. It's a black screen with the map in a corner, which worked on the Wii because you only had one big screen. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I'm I've, still looking for bloody Xenoblade Chronicles. It's like it's nowhere on eBay. It's like ninety quid. I'm like, oh. uh, it, it is. It is ridiculous. Just come, oh. just come around my house and we'll play it here. We'll yeah. Because just... <laughs> I was fortunate enough to get the game when it first came out. Mm. Boy, am I glad I did. <laughs> you were definitely ahead on that one. Yeah, I'm so... <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for other people that the game is so hard to come by because I'm like, oh, but it's so good. <laughs> it's one of the best games ever. It's like, I can't play it. It is the best. It's, it is. It's my favorite game ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Xenoblade Chronicles 3D still being advertised. Uh, and then we got to the new Fire Emblem. Which... Yes! <laughs> yeah, with, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, James, you take over because you, you sound Yee, excited. I'm so excited. Um, yes, this is, um, this is not, it's going to be set up, I think it's set after Awakening, but it's set a long time afterwards. So from what I can tell, no characters are returning from Awakening. So a whole new story. Um, the avatar you create is actually a main character this time. He is the main character. He's not a sidekick like in Awakening, which I didn't mind. I personally didn't mind that I was like a sidekick to the main character, but some people didn't like it. So what happens is you were born in one country, but you were raised in another. And this leads to basically a choice system. You actually join two different factions. Um, your place where you... C- which you were born to, or the one you were raised by. And both play in different ways. What's really interesting is both play styles. Um, but on the one hand, you've got your home, which I think is called Hotsaw, or... Let me have a quick look. 
Um, Hoshido. The Hoshido faction plays more like Fire Emblem Awakening. While the Noor faction play much more traditional, the original Fire Emblem games. Which are a lot more strategical, a lot more difficult, and a more complex narrative. Which, definitely interesting. I've also been hearing that there's a third choice, and you can actually not choose either faction. Is that, but, a, def- is that a definitive, or is that just a rumour? That's a ru- that's a rumour, but it's been reported that they that it might be added in, but we don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if there was like a sort of third true oh. choice. Yeah. Like there's going to be a true ending. I, I would imagine that if it was, you could make one that was neither side. I'm assuming that would probably be the canon well, the storyline. Way... Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I am not a Fire Emblem fan, so I am like not super hyped as James is. But I do have some things to say about the game. And uh, don't get angry with me, James, when I say this, because I feel... Go I... on. Well, first of all, the, the game is like... There are two kingdoms you got the peace loving hoshido ki- hoshido and the was it nor nor yeah you again got nor and it's like you've got to choose who to side with and it's like oh my god this is going to be such a difficult choice who do i side with not really <laughs> well that, again because that's my point because rather than give you two morally gray sides one of the s- nor's clearly evil ah look at them but i completely agree with you but I do have a comeback for this. Because when they talk about Nor, you're not joining Nor exactly. Hoshido, you are bla- full out joining them. You are working with them to help save them. With Nor, it says you're trying to incite a revolution inside. You are actually trying to change them. I can hear you tapping on your like, desk yes. or something. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to make a point! <laughs> I am making this point now! But... It seems like it's so. It seems like it's still going to be probably one route. It's just different gameplay styles. By okay. The sounds of it. Okay, because I remember when in the trailer, like they show off the two kingdoms. And it's like with Oshido. Nor see, looks clearly no, evil. O- Oshi- <laughs> Oshido is like, oh, it, it's daylight. The sun's out. There's flowers everywhere. All the people are like, there's some, there's some woman standing there. Is very elegant, very dignified. And she's like mm-hmm. talking pe- clearly, talking peacefully with the surrounding crowds. And then your first sight of Nor is some guy getting murdered with arrows yeah. and some <laughs> evil old balls guy reaching towards the camera, like <laughs> sneering. He and looks it's like, like evil old I, Ganondorf. I'm there, like going, hmm. I wonder who the villains the villain are. <laughs> yeah, Nor is clearly a villains, but what saved that for me is that they have said that you are revolutionizing them from the inside. Okay. Which definitely sounds like an interesting mechanic. It sounds like you're still kind of. Either way, you're still kind of working with Hoshido, but in different ways. Which I definitely think is an interesting mechanic. I'm hoping we get more out of it. Um, My only big main anger is that this is coming out in june i think for japan and and in 2016 for the rest of the world yeah it's like oh why well in japan isn't it coming out as two different games is it from what i have not heard from what i've heard in japan it's called fire emblem if and there's a black version and a white version Hmm. so and i'd imagine then when it comes over to the west it's then going to be all put together in one game. That would be interesting. I haven't heard that. That elite there, so um, that that might be part of the reason why. Plus, I'd imagine it's a very text-heavy game. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of dialogue to translate, not just for England, of course, but for like you know all the other European countries. Yeah. I will say, like, I like the idea of it of um, you being able to, of you choosing between which kingdom you side with, especially because they de- very much present it as being a proper. It needs to be a proper emotional choice. Yeah. Like, when if there's a, ever a moment in gaming where you're given two different choices, it gets to a big moment and you're given two clear choices, but one choice is clearly so much more obvious to take than the other. You've kind of done goofed. Yeah. To be fair, also on the North faction, some of the North people don't look overly evil. Well, yeah, they wear black, but they don't come across as evil. Although that being said... uh, The the main 
leader looks villainous as fuck. But I remember seeing some people, it's like, oh, who will you side with, Hoshido and Noor? And on the Noor side, there's this one woman with massive boobs. <laughs> and it's like, I, oh, I don't that. know, Noor's pretty tempting. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> who to side with? I will say I'm not fond of the idea that... Uh, depending on who you side with, depends on what type of game you get. Because I feel like this is meant to be an emotional decision based on you as a player. But by yeah. implementing that, it's then saying like, well, I want to side with Noor, but I don't want it to be challenging. And I'm like, well, tough shit. You've got you to have, you have a difficult game if you side with Noor. But I, was... I don't want a difficult game. Tough shit. I think what they mean is like, it's going to be like, um, it's just different gameplay styles. But again, like you said, if it does go to, oh, I don't like that gameplay style, it hampers my choice. Exactly. Which is definitely a problem. But we'll have to see how it's implemented. Hopefully, I I have no doubt they'll implement it well, especially after how good Awakening is. I will definitely say this, though. I hope they stick with, have permadeath, but please make it optional again. I'd imagine so. It'd be weird to take permadeath out. I mean, oh, they won't. T- t- they won't take I mean, it out. I mean, taking optional, per- taking the option yeah, the out. Option. Yeah, I was about to say they wouldn't. They wouldn't take permadeath out. That's that's a staple of the series. Yeah, I know they wouldn't take permadeath out, but it'd be weird if they took out the option to have yeah. permadeath out. So, well, I know a lot of people are very excited for Fire Emblem, and like you know, good to them that we're getting another Fire Emblem game. You should definitely give it a try. I think I, I honestly think Michael, you would love it. With permadeath off. Yeah, because I'm a you... fucking coward. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, I played. When I first played Fire Emblem Awakening, I had the permadeath off. Because I wanted to experience the story first. And then I played with permadeath on, and I lost three characters in the first few levels. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, one character, Sumia, who I really like, um, I usually pair of Krom. Uh, she's a Pegasus Knight, so she's like, she's very maneuverable, she hits fairly hard. But archers will usually kill her in about a hit. Yeah. An archer killed her in one hit. Uh... I was like, no! And you know what's even worse? It happened straight after her only cutscene. Ah! Uh... <laughs> like, there's a cutscene where she saves Krom, and then it's like, oh yeah, thank you, and all this sort. And then dead. she joins the battle, and then an archer just went, dink! <laughs> oh no, Sumia! Yeah, I'd, have, I'd reset the game after that. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, fuck this. Screw this shit. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, that's Fire Emblem. Uh, after that is a, uh, another Animal Crossing. Not a full game. It's like a sort of mini game thing called Happy Home Designer, mm. where you can get amiibo cards. Yeah. That you can use to sort of scan into your 3DS and you'll be given, like, a character and they'll want you to design a house. Seems a bit of a very little thing and would only really appeal to the most hardcore of Animal Crossing fans if I'm honest yeah I was about even to then say. even then I can imagine Animal Crossing fans looking at this and going the fuck is this <laughs> I could just do this on my main game I suppose I, yeah. I could never get into Animal Crossing I've got to be honest I tried with the GameCube game and yeah I got bored of it after a while so I could I can definitely understand why people like it it's like the same people that when they play Skyrim they just they don't do the main game they just like do odd stuff around the house and everything. Yeah. I couldn't do that. No, neither could I. I was the explorer in Skyrim. I just kept finding things. But, and then uh... giants kept getting my way and kept killing me. So yeah, that's the Animal Crossing thing. Not really much to talk about there. Yeah. But uh, after that, uh, the last announcements of the Direct were concerning Mario Kart 8. And <laughs> first off is the fact that we finally got to see the second DLC pack... Mm. which will come with the villager as a playable character, both male and female variants. Isabel mm-hmm. from Animal Crossing will be playable, and Dry Bowser will be returning. Nice. Yeah, that's always nice. Uh, we also know that the pack will come with an Animal Crossing course, as you do. <laughs> and it looks <laughs> really fun. It looks really cool, because apparently every time you start it up, the season changes. That's interesting. Yeah, so there's like a... Is there's, it doesn't depend on the time of year. It just ran, it's just randomly selected every time you pick up the course. So there's like spring, summer, autumn, and winter, which is cool. It's just a nice visual aesthetic. I doubt it will change how the course runs. Hmm. Like the uh, the excite. It should be a nice aesthetic in the background. The excite bike so. track that got released in the last DLC pack. The layout of that. I mean, it was a, It was still like a zero shape course. Yeah. But where the ramps and stuff were positioned always changed. So it'll be a bit like that, which is pretty cool. Like I'm, I'm 
fully welcoming with that. Hmm. So it's obviously going to come with those three characters, the Animal Crossing course, along with seven others, and uh, some more vehicles as well. So it's more or less like the sec- the last pack, but yeah. you know, with more stuff, which I'm all down for. Definitely, all mo- new stuff. Also, um, you've got the new s- speed, like the, oh, the yeah. speedier vehicles. Well, before we get to that real quick... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the last thing, because they also said, just a quick little thing here, a uh, future update... Because uh, you know how you can use certain amiibo of Mario Kart 8 to get like unique costumes for your Miis? Mm-hmm. Well, they're going to do an update which will allow even more amiibos to be compatible, including Mega Man, Sonic, and Pac-Man. Yay! So you can get Mega Man, Sonic, and Pac-Man costumes for your Mii, which is cool. Mm. But, uh, Especially the Mega yeah, Man one. Yeah, definitely. But the biggest thing, like you said, is the new, is the new racing class, 200cc. <laughs> oh my god. I'll be honest, I could have lived without this, and I'm not super hyped for it, but it's still neat nonetheless. I've seen like a side-by-side of how fast it is, and Same, it's yeah. so fast. It's so fast. <laughs> I can see that being a massive hampering as well, because it, it'd probably be very hard to turn. It that does seem to be, the, they very much said that it's very much going to require braking skills, so mm-hmm. drifting is going to be a must. It'll be fun to try out. Yeah. But, uh... I could, I probably wouldn't want it to come back for future Mario Karts. It's a nice little addition, but it's nothing major. Yeah, I feel, I feel like, as an ending to the direct, I feel like it was a bit okay. It's neat, I guess. I you mean, it's something may- a little bit bigger. Well, I feel, I feel like they shouldn't. I don't think they should have ended with the Smash Brothers stuff. I feel like they had to get that out first. Yeah. So I'm glad they started with Mewtwo. But I feel like the 200 seat because like they started like we got a new announcement for Mario Kart and it was like all building up and I was like oh god what are they going to announce and then he said 200 CC and I was like oh, oh. <laughs> okay also we have a Titan from Attack on Titan as a as a cart choice <laughs> I just like see they... a deviant class running along yeah I feel like maybe they should have ended with the Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem trailer yeah I think that would have been a good ending or the Fire Emblem trailer yeah. Or like uh, maybe like a teaser for Star Fox, maybe. Oh my god, yes. Because I was ex- oh. I was expecting something Star Fox related, but no, nothing. I, maybe I want a new Star Fox, please. We're gonna get a new Star Fox, James. Don't worry, it's I, wor- in the works. I know, but I gotta be honest. Like a uh, the first Star Fox game I played was the one on the Super SNES, the very old one. I yeah. loved and I loved it. It was very hard, but I loved it. And then. I freely admit I enjoyed this game. I know John Tron didn't. Oh, Star Fox Adventures. Yes. That seems to be... As a kid, I liked it. As an adult? I can definitely see why people hated it. I think Star Fox Adventures, to me, seems like one of those games that is a, uh, a very Marmite game. There are loads of people that love it, but there are also loads that hate it. I can definitely see... Especially for people who love Star Fox... I can 100% agree why people hate it. But I also love dinosaurs. <laughs> so, it, I'm sorry. Star Fox Adventures was meant to be a game called Dinosaur Planet for the N64. It had yes. nothing to do with Star Fox. And then they changed it. It would have been cool because Crystal was going to be the main character. Yeah. They should have stuck with just not being Star Fox related at all, but there's the brakes. Ooh, Crystal for Smash Brothers. She's a hotly Ooh, demand- yeah. She's a hotly demanded character. I'm actually quite surprised no, no one's. Yeah, I haven't heard that much of her. No. Have you not? Like, I remember we- dur- during all the talk for Smash Brothers brawl, people were like, "Oh, I sure hope Crystal's in the game." No, I haven't seen that. Oh well. Yeah, Crystal for Smash Brothers. That'd be good. Because she plays very differently to Fox. Exactly. You know, she's she could use the staff. Yeah. Hmm, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, and a Super Smash can be using dinosaurs. Yeah. Tricky, <laughs> tricky just comes out of nowhere. Oh god! <laughs> Not tricky, no. <laughs> oh my god! I always you're lucky loved how you're a Triceratops kid. Otherwise, I... <laughs> I did love how we start with Star Wars Avengers. You know, there's like there's a whole other language, but it's like Duke Dark Duke Dark Duke General oh Scales. That was okay. Even as a kid, I thought that was stupid. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's a whole other language, but then oh wait, no. The important part is or the, what was the other one? Uh, la la, Palace. Palace. That's like, great. <laughs> oh wow! I love it. <laughs> Cure. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, we probably won't see anything of Star Fox until E3. We're definitely I not going to see anything Zelda related at E3. Mm. So Where's it's... my Zelda? I'm actually quite pleased that the majority of the reaction to that Zelda delay was okay. <laughs> like pe- people are disappointed, but they're like, y- y- you know yeah, what, guys, okay. we can we can relax, you know, because you know, yeah, we're not going to see anything for another year, but you know, it means the game will be better. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Ocarina of Time got delayed for two years, and that <laughs> game is now considered to be the best game ever. Mm-hmm. I've actually got to be kind of honest. I still think Wing Waker was better. I'm I'm not disagreeing with you there. <laughs> Yay. I don't. I don't think Ocarina of Time is that great. It's decent. It's not. It's fa- decent. It's not fantastic. It's definitely aged. And I think um, Wind Waker was just a better game, much more colorful and bright and interesting. This will. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I think aspects of Skyward Sword are better than Ocarina of Time. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, I just want to make it clear. Aspects as a game, Ocarina no. of Time is better. Yeah, I won't deny that. Ocarina of Time is a better game than Skyward Sword, but there are aspects of Skyward Sword that I think are better. I think it has a be- I think it looks better. I think it has a better character. Oh, yeah, char- I better. think it has a better cast of characters. Certainly has a more developed story than Ocarina of Time. Hmm. I think it's the same Majora's Mask, and I I I got to be brutally honest. I could never get into Majora's Mask as a kid. I have yet to play Majora's Mask. I will get the 3D remake. I will. Mm. Same here, because I do want to like try again and actually get into that game. But yeah, when I originally tried to play it, I was not as impressed. Wind Waker, just beautiful. And I don't get why people hated the sailing. I love the bloody sailing. I always find it funny how, like, uh, I keep hearing how, pe- when obviously when the game was first announced, everyone was like, What the fuck? It looks so shit. Where's the cartoon is and Zelda's supposed to be an adult game for adult people Ugh. and then like 10 years now people were like yeah I, I thought that I did I wasn't one of those guys that hated the game when it was first shown I was <laughs> that was just a ch- yeah I was, I was totally I liked the game before it was cool shut the fuck up no you didn't <laughs> you thought it was going to be terrible don't lie uh, Wind Waker good memories <laughs> And yeah, I've been mean, a tip for the Nintendo Direct. Yeah, it was a uh, it, it was very much what I was sort of expecting. I, I wasn't yeah. expecting to be as excited as I was for some of the stuff, but it was very much uh, there were some bits where I was like, I oh, yeah, was. That's... <laughs> there were bits where I was like, oh yeah, that's cool, and there were bits where I was like, eh, can live without. I couldn't live without Fire Emblem. <laughs> I'm just More glad Fire that Fire Emblem everywhere. I'm just glad that Shimigami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem finally got something, because like, yeah. you know, everyone was like, where the fuck is that game? It was in the bowels of the earth with Last Guardian, Half-Life 3, and Fallout 4. Kingdom Hearts 3 slowly claw- crawling out of the top, like, yeah. guys, I've got, <laughs> I've got stuff to show you, and Square Enix going, no, alive. Ga- Kingdom Hearts 3 is like trying to crawl out of the box, going, no, guys, I have things to show you, and Square Enix is going, no, get back in there. Get back in the box. <laughs> They've waited ten years, they can wait a little bit longer. <laughs> Put the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose again. <laughs> ah, dated reference not many people get. But Yeah, but we were supposed to talk about um Disney's remakes, but Well we could we could definitely cover that real quick, because uh All I'll make... say is this Beauty and the Beast is being directed by the guy who made Breaking Dawn. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I wish that was April Fools. Okay. <laughs> I think I've broken Michael. Well, live action Dumbo is getting directed by Tim Burton, so. Oh fucking hell! I Yay, guarantee you, Tim Burton, who hasn't made a good movie in a long bloody time. I guarantee you, Johnny Depp will play the mouse in that film. There's gonna be no other way. <laughs> Why am I? That, that that wouldn't surprise me, if I'm honest. I honestly don't get where this sudden flux of live-action remakes of all their old films is coming from. I we don't got, know. We got Cinderella this year. We've got Beauty and the Beast and Jungle Book scheduled for next year. We've got a live-action Dumbo in the works. A live-action Mulan. And Wait, there's a live-action Mulan coming? Have you not heard of that? No, I have not heard of this. There's a live-action Mulan being worked on. 
If Ming-Na Wen comes back, then yes! it might save it. Yes! That would save yes! it. Yes! <laughs> yes! I'm so glad you said that. Because I keep seeing people like sort of debating about like, oh, who should like play as Mulan? And they're Ming-Na listing Wen. Of, they're listing all these um, Asian or Chinese actors and stuff, which is great. But rather mm. that than them listing, you know, anyone who's not Chinese. Yeah. But uh, they're listing all these Chinese actors. And I'm like, guys, Ming-Na Wen. It only makes sense. She was Mulan, and she's awesome. Yeah, she voiced Mulan in the original film. I don't care. I don't care if she's fifty-one, and like Mulan's she... sixteen. <laughs> Let's be honest. She's fifty-one, and she looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, you know um the new James Bond movie. Yeah. Uh, Monica Bellucci's gonna be the Bond girl in that. Okay. And people complain saying she's too old. She's fifty. I was like. Yeah, she's 50 and she looks better than you and you're in your 20s. Go home! Yeah, sort of like, kind of just get over that. It's not mm. really a big deal. But yeah, no, I don't care if Ming-Na Wen doesn't look like... It obviously, everyone would be like, oh, she's, she's, she's like in her 50s. She can't play a 16-year-old. Who gives a shit? I don't care. Still bloody better than the director of Breaking Dawn making Beauty and the Beast. Not sure how that's going to turn out. Shit. Well, in a to, word. Well, let's be... To be fair, the director had Breaking Bad... Uh, Breaking Dawn, not Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh my god, if it was Breaking Bad, I'd be happy. Dif- different thing entirely. But yeah, no, because like, you know... Twilight's a shit series of books to begin with. Yeah. You don't, I don't think he really had that much to work with. Well, to, no, because here's the thing. They did the... um, They did the another thing I hate in movies. The final fight yeah, is yeah, all a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When I when I found out about that, I was just like, and people like this series. Yes, I will say though, I have seen some of the casting for the Beauty and the Beast, and some of the casting, I'm like, yeah, I'm actually kind of okay with that. Well, yeah, they've got Emma Watson as Belle. Mm-hmm. Perfect. They've got Emma dude Thompson. from down, dude from Downton Abbey as uh, the Beast. Yep, Emma Thompson's Mrs. Potts. Oh, really? Yeah, Emma Thompson's Mrs. Potts. Josh Gad is LeFou. Oh, what's, what's Josh He's Gad a been in? Gaston's... Uh, he was no. um, um, Book of Mormon, and he was in Frozen. Oh, yeah, he's Olaf. He's Olaf in Frozen, and he's playing LeFou. That's actually good casting. I will give that one. Yeah. Uh, and Kevin Klein's playing Maurice. Okay. There's one casting choice I'm kind of eh over. Is it I Gaston's? Don't... Yes. Who's playing I... Gaston? Luke Evans. I don't know who that is. Um, Bard the Bowman from the Hobbit movies. I still don't know who that is. <laughs> Hang on, let me give you the link. No, I was just looking at myself. Okay. It, it, he's not a bad actor. Like, people give him a lot of crap. I'm like, guys, he is not the worst actor. He's, he's fine. It's just he's not Gaston. He's not particularly tall. He's not particularly macho. It's just not a great choice. I don't know how you can complain, James. After all, he's been in such fantastic films as Clash of the Titans and <laughs> Fast and Furious 6. And Dracula Untold. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> what? No, I ju- just, just mentioning Dracula Untold. I've heard terrible things. I've heard. <laughs> it turns out Dracula movie. was actually a good guy. Oh, my. Who would have thought? You know what's the thing that made me just go, what? They said, oh yeah, this is going to be the story, the untold story of Dracula. I was like, oh, okay, so they're going to do Vlad Tepes. And then they were like, oh yeah, it's kind of that, but also we're going to add in loads of vampire stuff because reasons. It's like, oh my god. Well, you kind of have a Dracula film without vampire stuff in it, but wasn't it like... Vlad Tepes was real. That's the thing. Yeah. But it, like, it was all like, oh, it turns out he was actually a nice guy and he was had a wife and a child. It was all so lovely. And then the bad people had to oh, come and ruin it. Fucking hell. Vlad Tepes was a fucking nutcase. Let's just throw that out there now. Vlad Tepes was insane. This was Let- a thing they made a joke of when Linkara and Bennett the Sage had a crossover. They did a one on Dracula. All it was right. hilarious. There seems to be a thing where a lot of 
films and me- and other media sort of like to present these characters who in any in real life would be fucking insane and should be reported to the police immediately but <laughs> but, in, but in media they're all like oh no he's it's romantic officer i'd like to report a crime vlad tepes is is well, no, impaling it, people again well no that's a that's a thing though it's like you know, wasn't like I remember. I didn't see it, but there was a film that came out like last year, early last year, called I Frankenstein. Oh my god! Where they that, took Frankenstein. How do you remember that movie? <laughs> they they took Frank because I I just remember seeing a trailer for it, and I'm like, so they've taken Frankenstein's monster and have made him a brooding but attractive antihero in a trench coat. Yeah, that's the thing. He's not Frankenstein. Like he's he's got a couple of scars. Ooh. Oh, I'm so ugly. And then there was one woman who's like, no, I see the true beauty. I'm just guessing here. I haven't seen the film, but this is my educated guess. It's basically Underworld, but even worse. <laughs> oh, God. And there's even elements of Underworld I actually kind of liked. The first one. But uh, another discussion for another long, long time. Yeah. Basically, back to the original point, bunch of fuck ton of live action Disney movies coming out. Well, live action remakes of all their old films, and it just puzzles me as to why that, like, not only are they making them, but they're all com- they're all announcing them so soon after each other. You know why, Michael? Why? Money. Money. That that, that <laughs> stupid question. Get a stupid have answer. Money. Money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I remember hearing somewhere somebody said that like they were like the right. The, they own the rights to obviously a lot of these and they're gonna the rights are gonna run out soon so in order to sort of re- renew them oh my god they're making these the films to, to renew the rights i think or something that like doesn't that. surprise me and that usually leads to the worst things because you know they also did that too dragon ball evolution <laughs> yeah i watched i watched that movie in the accompaniment of a friend of mine who had watched dragon ball <laughs> and he and he kept looking at me like that never happened I'm like, I, I, I look know. at me. I'm like, I'm just I as know. lost as you. I, to be fa- to be fair to him, he wasn't like super angry at it. He was just a little bit confused. Here's the thing, though. No, um, listening to the to the fan riffing by Team Four Star on that movie, yeah, they eat brought up a really good point. Dragon Ball Evolution feels like one of the old fantasy films in the '90s that were released straight to video, like huh. the kid loses his uncle meet someone else and they go on a wacky adventure got, yeah no, you that's like what that. it is well to be fair like the obviously the dragon ball manga was based off of an old um uh, oh yeah old, it was an old uh it was, it, it was a japanese story wasn't it yes it was a um, yeah, journey, oh, journey, to the, journey west. to the west yeah it was based off of that oh yeah so it kind of makes sense if it feels a bit like that but yeah it was like there is just so much wrong with that. I think I know what to do for another movie commentary. Um, yeah. Just all be, these ideas. Yeah. I, I mean, Actually, I've got another one. Another idea. Um, as most people know, me and Michael are massive fans of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But yeah. there was an original series. And there was a really shitty movie that was meant to end it all. I really want us to do Conqueror Shambhala. Really? Because have you watched that movie, Michael? No, but I oh wa- my god, I haven't watched the original series either. Cause... It's all right, you'll be fine. <laughs> I will say this though: the rage. All oh, right. Well, I feel like I feel like it'd be unfair to get angry over a movie for that since it's not technically in the same continuity as Brotherhood. So, oh, trust me, there will still be things you'll you'll rage about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it it'd be like the opposite of. For me, it'd be Evangelion, me raging, and for this one, it'd be you raging. <laughs> I've used up all my rage for Conqueror Shambhala. It's it's just really, really bad. I, I'm always sort of tempted to watch the original Full Metal Alchemist series because of like how different it is to Brotherhood. Yeah. Here's the like... thing. It's not bad. Yeah, it doesn't sound bad. It's just the fact it's so different, different. that it would be really weird. Hmm. Uh, the animation's not as good, obviously. Well, that's because it was made in 2003, wasn't it? Y- yeah. A lot. And Brotherhood was made in 2010. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously the animation budget goes up a fair bit. But also, it just... The ending was really shit, and I disagree completely with a few critics who are like, Oh no, it ended fine. No, it didn't. 
if I was a fan of the original series, I would be pissed at that ending. Because it ends on the mother of all cliffhangers. Ugh. Yeah. And then the movie was meant to end it, and... Oh my god. It ended it alright. Badly. There's nothing worse than a bad ending. Oh. As Mass Effect 3 can attest to. <laughs> still, haven't, still haven't got round to that yet. I know, you've... You've been trying to get into it, and it's been very difficult for you. I'm, I, I must have pissed off so many people with that <laughs> comment. <laughs> to be fair, you're still going through the first beginning bit, which I will agree with you is kind of difficult, and it is very throwaway. It's not that it's difficult, it's just it's not difficult, but like really a... slow. and like That's what I mean, difficult to get through. And it's... I, I, wrote, I wrote an art Again, I wrote an article about my uh, first experience with the first Mass Effect, and like... Mm. I read it. Yeah, from uh, what I played, it's again like none of the I can't remember any of the characters' names apart from Shepard. Yep. And none of them are that interesting except for well, is it Garrus that was his name? Yes. He was cool and then they killed him. No, 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 no. that's not Garrus. I was I was oh. about to say, wait, what? No, that's um uh Nihilus. Nihilus. Garrus is a um, Garrus, Garrus is a character G- you'll meet soon enough and he's right. an actual Nihilus. companion. Nihilus was cool and then they killed him. If it and makes that... if it makes it any better, Garrus is more awesome. Okay, and then it's like, what's the villain? Sarian is that his name? Saren. Saren. He was cool until he threw a temper tantrum on his ship. <laughs> I was like, okay, this guy looks really cool, and then he's on the ship, and there's some woman comes up to him and says, "Oh, by the way, uh, a human has like got the same information," and he he may as well have thrown his toys out of the pram. He was like, yeah, yeah. You'll see why he's kind of like that. It's not through his own volition. Well, I don't mind having a very intimidating character turn out to be a whiny piss baby. I mean, two of my favourite video game villains ever are exactly like that. But there was (laughs) builds up to it. Yeah. This one, it just kind of came out and I'm like, oh, well, you've lost all credibility. (laughs) You'll see. You'll see. But I will say this once... Once you get to the citadel and you can, and you get through the main bits there, which you it won't take you long. It'll take you like a, you'll get through it pretty quickly. It's like it's like the first hour and a half of Persona Four. It's it's the same with all RPGs. The first hour and a half, two hours, or that's what it's meant to be anyway. Thirteen, the first couple of hours are are slow. They pick up, and okay. also you get you get to meet more of your companions who are far more interesting than the characters you have at the moment. Right. Because this, this this will piss you off, James Royley. Because, like, Go I on. got to, I stopped after a while playing Mass Effect. I then went over to Kingdom Hearts 2 and I found the tutorial section more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, admittedly, I was already familiar with... I've played Kingdom Hearts 2 before, so I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know yeah, what I'm yeah. doing. I know what's going to happen. I know the plot. But I'm still... I was going for the whole thing and was just sort of like riffing on it to myself. I'm mm. just sort of like, ah, oh, that's stupid. Ah, oh, that's lame. But it was like, it was still somewhat engaging. Then Mass Effect. I will, be, I will agree with you that the opening of Mass Effect is not great. The opening. The rest of the game's good. Mass Effect 2's better. Like, just flat out better. But I do agree with you for definite that the opening of Mass Effect is very slow. Too slow. Yeah, I, there was there was a few little things that really bothered me about it, like the fact that you've got that that one character who's like, "Oh man, I can't wait to see some action," and Shepard's like, "Don't be a hero." <laughs> so- Shepard's like, "Don't be a hero soldier," and I'm thinking, "Well, he's gonna die at some point." To and then be, he, and then he died, and it was so underwhelming. Away. I'm like, "Oh." To be fair, there's kind of a thing like you know his name's Leroy. Oh god! He's the I reference didn't... to Leroy Jenkins. Oh god! I didn't realize that. That's that's kind of why it was an in joke. But no, still, even... it was still handled poorly. But oh god, was it was the... handled poorly because I was expecting there was going to be like some big fucking deal where like the game, to, like his death was going to be like drawn out or something, or that like, the characters would be like, oh my god, I can't believe he died, or it was like. Oh, would, they like, saved play... that for later characters. Well, like it was plague on everybody's minds, but no, they literally kill him, and that's it. I'm like, oh, you're not Damn even gonna... it, Leroy. You're not even going to try and make me feel sorry for him. You're just going like, okay. No, no one remembers Leroy. They they actually try to make you remember him later in the other games. I'm like, I don't remember him. <laughs> I played the games and I don't remember him. 
No, it, it gets better once you get to the Citadel and you start doing the stuff there. And once you meet... I'm just going to say it right now. You'll meet three characters. Rex, Garrus, and Tali. Okay. They are far more interesting and you'll definitely like them a lot better. I'm going to hold you to that. I think you will. Are you playing as Femship or Maleship again? Uh, I, I went with Maleship in the end. You went with Maleship. Fair enough. I do like the fact that I can choose his backstory. Yeah, that was that really good. That was cool. Who did you go for for your for your one? Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I went with the backstory where his parents and family were all killed in a raid by bandits, and he's also oh. the he's also the sole survivor of a mission gone wrong. But is, so, is you that... pick, so you picked the brutalist of brutal beginnings. Well, all the beginnings. Well, actually, no, not all the beginnings were no. brutal. But uh, well, that's to I... say, I I picked the um the spacefaring one. Like, my mother's still alive. Oh, okay. That, like um, and there's actually a mission in in there. This is for if you pick that one. Yeah. Um, you actually have a mission, and it's from your mother. That's kind of cool. And it's like, oh, this is nice. So the actual, it's not big things it changes, but it's nice little. It's a things. nice little thing. Although, the thing is, if I was in charge of that idea, I'd have it play like they're all, like just sort of traveling, and then like that like your mum appears on the screen and is like, "Hi, John." Oh God, no. <laughs> oh no, mother. Ma- Mom. <laughs> I would do that, and like she's like this badass space commander, but she also goes, "Don't forget to tidy your room, okay, Mom?" <laughs> I'd int- introduce me to your friends. Mom, go away. <laughs> oh god video games hire michael <laughs> but uh also that i went with the shell shocked guy for my one because i, ca- I kind of like that idea and the thing mm. is though like it was also fucking leroy he's like oh you've seen some action didn't you were like a fucking hero and you survived a mission i'm like dude everyone else died, died. <laughs> i was god, the only survivor you have no tact <laughs> damn it leroy uh, okay, now I'm wishing they kept Leroy alive just so he could fuck up everything. <laughs> and everyone just goes, damn it, Leroy. That'd be a thing for Mass Effect 4 because apparently that's going to start a whole new set of games. Well, I'd hope so because how can you continue on for Mass Effect 3? Mm. I've got to do... be honest, I I really hope we get to play as different races because when I played yeah, Dragon Age... Said. When I played Dragon Age Inquisition, I played as a dwarf and I was like, yes! <laughs> I pl- I play as different races, and it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, it'd be cool if you could play, like, uh, whatever the race that Garrus and Nihilus are from. Um, Turians. They're, yeah. they're like, the most... They're the most... They're clever and everything, but they're also the most warlike. They're definitely battle-hardened and everything. Um, you got them, you got the Krogans, who are just, like, big walking bags of destruction, but awesome. Um, you got the Asari, an all-female race. You'll see soon enough. I actually want to play as a Silurian, but you'll see their glory, especially in Mass Effect 2 with Morden. Okay. But, yeah. I I definitely agree with you that the first couple of hours of Mass Effect are definitely very slow, but it will definitely pick up. And yeah, that's what, once that's you get it. the other characters. Yeah, everyone else has been sort of telling me that. They're like, no, stick with it. It gets better. Hmm. Which I'm sort of like, uh, I don't know. But then I think myself, I'd pro- if, if it was like somebody played Persona 4 and they were like, oh, this game's beginning is so yeah. slow, I'd be doing the exact same thing. Going, yeah. no, no, stick with it. It gets amazing. It's exactly, well, it's not exactly not Persona 4, but it's, it's in the similar vein of the first couple of hours are very slow, but then it picks up. Yeah. It's the, it's the same with most RPGs. And then they try and get away with it with 13 where they go, oh, it gets good in the last 24 hours. <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours? It's like, God, Final Fantasy thirteen sucks. Oh, don't worry, it gets better. Oh, really? When is that? Uh, in about 100 hours of gameplay. How about no? Pourquoi? <laughs> so I could play any other RPG and it gets good in a couple of hours, or I could play that game and it gets good in 24 hours. I'll pick the other games, thank you. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah. We've we've gone massively off tangent again. Well, to be fair, it's, <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> what were we talking about? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, the the Disney films. I don't know how we yeah. got. On <laughs> we went way off. Actually, just before we end, one other one of the other live action Disney films I forgot to mention. Apparently, and this is without a doubt the most bizarre one to choose. Oh no, what? 
live action Winnie the Pooh. What? What? Okay, the animals have to be CGI. What? You can't, unless... What? Yeah, okay, I have officially broken James. <laughs> no. Oh, no, you've just... You've just given me a horrible idea. Oh, no. What's that? Come on, share it with the rest. They make Winnie and P- the Pooh CGI and everything. Yeah. And they basically turn it into the Smurfs movie. Oh! Oh! Oh, God, I'm... Oh! <laughs> Oh, I almost threw up. Oh. No, James, James, this is Disney. This is Disney. Even they don't go that far. Oh, I if don't know. If... They made Cars. No, that was Pixar. That was Pixar. Disney Not... Pixar. <laughs> and also, the, I'm pretty sure the live action films are like handled by a different studio or something or other. But they're also if the it... guys who gave Breaking Dawn's look, director Beauty and the Beast. Look, look, look. If it's a live action Winnie the Pooh, they've still got to make it somewhat, you know accurate as a representation of the original source material they are not gonna do something as shitty as having the characters end up in modern day because that's not what happens in the store in the original stories it's nothing like the film i mean i haven't seen the live action cinderella it doesn't look that great to me in all honesty but it looks accurate to say the least it made me laugh because it's got richard madden from game of thrones in a (laughs) wedding scenario and i'm like this would be so much better if it was the end of season three (laughs) Everyone just dies. Yes. <laughs> but um, the thing is, though, um, my problem with the live-action Disney movies that they're doing nowadays, I mean, live-action remakes, I have to keep establishing that, um, <sighs> is the fact that, on their own, these movies could possibly que- be pretty good. You know, obviously, it's, it's still too early for us to be saying, oh, they're going to turn out to be shit. They could turn out to be amazing. It's just the fact that we've had these films already, and they were great. Yeah. You don't need to do them again, but with actual people. If anything, it ends up sort of removing some of the charm from it. You know what I found kind of hilarious? This is with the Cinderella movie. They did Into the Woods, which is meant to be a deconstruction of the whole fantasy genre. And then they did Cinderella straight-laced. It was like, did you not get Into the Woods? Kind of taking the piss out of what you just made? I don't know. Just... Live action Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh God. Uh. I, I'm, st- even though it's even though like ninety percent of my brain is saying it's going to be shit, I still want to reserve judgment until I at least see a trailer. Yeah, because it's still too early. I just. My uh. biggest worry is if like we get the live action Mulan and all the actors are white. That's my biggest. Oh worry. my God. Oh, like the uh, the Peter Pan movie that's coming out. Oh yeah, the one where they got Tiger Lily being played by a white girl. Oh my... Or Tonto being played by Johnny Depp. Yeah. Oh, people keep saying, oh, but he's part Native American. No, he's not. (laughs) It's it's still fucking racist. I'm sorry, but it is. Going off of the Johnny Depp thing, which goes to Tim Burton, which goes back to the Dumbo. Yeah. Live action Dumbo. Elephant's got to be CGI, right? Probably, because yes. you can't make an actual elephant fly. No. The original Dumbo was barely over an hour long. Yeah, it's it was 60, short. It's 61 minutes long. No film nowadays could last that long. They have to be like two hours long. At the but, very least, 90 minutes. Yeah, that's, or limit, even that's getting minutes. rarer. Yeah, exactly. So how much can you add to Dumbo? Because for starters, he doesn't talk. He's a baby. He can't speak. How many movies nowadays have a silent protagonist? Oh, how I wish that was the case in some movies. Like, there's so there's so little to go with because it's such a short, compact story. You know, mm. elephant, elephant gets born, gets mocked because he has huge ears. Mum gets angry, gets taken away. Two are separated. Oh my god, could you imagine if the whole of Dumbo was done live action and all of it was basically silent? Oh shit! That would be interesting. I would it actually won't. go. Okay, it won't. I know it won't happen because <laughs> the last time they tried to do that, studio executives got in the way. There was um, you know, the Walking with Dinosaurs movie. Oh, god! That was meant to be silent. Do you want to know why? Be... 
do you want to know why it was meant to be silent? Because the original Walking di- Walking with Dinosaurs so was the same. Was silent. I know. I loved the original Walking with Dinosaurs. The only talking there was was from the narrator Kenneth Branagh. Walking that was with it. Di- Walking with Dinosaurs was a documentary about dinosaurs. dinosaurs. It and then they made a film about it where they turned it into every generic plot ever. It was bloody terrible. When I saw that trailer and realised there was a plot and the dinosaurs talked, I was like, what? If you're going to make a bloody Land Before Time ripoff, go ahead. Don't make a Walking With Dinosaurs film and attach your shitty story to it. That was just... Oh, my God. I think it would have been fine if it didn't have any dialogue. It wouldn't be great, but it would be fine. But no, a studio executive decided, no, we've got to have shitty jokes in it. Because it won't appeal to the kids. And it's like, yep. have you ever thought that maybe it's not meant to be for the kids? Because it's, doc- it's a documentary. It's meant to educate. Here's the thing. They say, oh, kids won't like it. I was a kid when I watched Walking with Dinosaurs, and I loved it. I was, I li- I was I had- nine years old when I watched that movie. I had Walking with Dinosaurs on VHS, and I loved it. Yeah, so... Yeah, there was no ca- there was no characterization or plot, but you know what it did have? CGI dinosaurs doing dinosaur things. things. And it was awesome. Kind of creepy, but... Oh, some of it was horrifying. Some of it was horrifying. You saw, like, one of those baby underwater dinosaurs get eaten. Uh It's decapitated head floating to the bottom of the ocean floor. One of the ones that was sad for me was the the fifth episode when you had, like, the little... The little guys. And then, um, like, the matriarch, the one that looks after them all, gets eaten by the bloody Allosaurus. It's like, oh! I remember one of them where it was like a whole bunch of like little baby dinosaurs living underground and then it's like the middle of the night and one of them sort of crawls up out of the hole and there's another dinosaur there and it just eats it. Yeah. And then the mum comes out and sort of like chases it off but the baby's dead. And it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I think that was the first episode. Yeah, it might have been the first. That like, that always got to me as a kid. I'm just like, oh, the baby's dead. It was really flipping harsh and it was really well done. Yeah. Also, incidentally, some people have been saying for the Mulan live-action movie, they want Jamie Chung to do it. She plays uh, Mulan uh, in Once Upon a Time. Oh, okay. And well, also, she... she was she was Chi-Chi in Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh, it was her? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'd be fine with that. I would I would be fine for that, because... Okay, f- starters, Chinese, makes yeah. sense. Also, also, while Dragon Ball Evolution was a terrible fucking movie, and she was not Chi-Chi... She's still a decent actress, and she's a good martial artist. When so... it comes, to, when it comes to like really bad movies, I don't like to talk about how bad the actors are because yeah, if they're, if they're it's not with fair a, on them. If they're stuck with a terrible script, then what do they have to work with? Yeah, unless they're out of their way being terrible, and even then, sometimes they're just doing that because they can't be bothered, <laughs> like Jeremy Irons in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Feel every ounce of your rage. <laughs> oh, Jamie Chung is in Big Hero 6. Oh, yeah. Go, go, Tamago. Still not seen that film. I've heard it's decent. I, I keep hearing good things about it. All I hear from people is how amazing it is. And she was uh, in Sin City, the second one. She was also in two Hangover movies, which is... Uh... Not a great thing. but No, but, you know, we've all got a... All actors are always... You know, yeah. they 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 uh, they need money as well. They got to yeah. take what they can get. <laughs> they they got to pay for that TV somehow. Yeah, I have. Also I would heard... be alright with her. I Ming Na right Wen would be my first choice. She'd yeah, Ming Na Wen would be my first choice. Ming Na Wen first, her second. You know what? If Ming Na Wen can't be Mulan, give us give her a role somewhere. Yes, either as like a cameo or as Mulan's mum. Definitely, just something. Just. Please, Ming Na Wen in more things. I have also heard, like, so I saw somebody say, "Okay, Disney for the live-action Mulan, get Eddie Murphy as Mushu." I don't know how much money <laughs> you need to pay him, but it's the only way because it's going to of... be CGI anyway, so yeah. it only makes get around it. Let's It'd be great, of Ming Na Wen. I've been hearing that um, Ming Na Wen and the Agents of Shield. Yeah, this is a rumor. So this, I do not know if this is true. Apparently, she, Clark Gregg, and Sky are going to be cameoing in Age of Ultron. Ooh. And considering what's happened to Sky in the latest episodes, 
Yeah. That's going to be pretty interesting. I haven't caught up because the second half of season two has started again over here in the UK and I haven't caught up with it yet. Mm. So I don't know what's happening. I know how I know how the first half ended. Um, I'm I'm not going to say what she is or who she well, is or what power she's got. But I'm just going to say this. She's turning into a superheroine. No shit. I saw the <laughs> ending of the first half of season two. We've let's be let's be honest. Okay, spoilers for Agents of Shield starting now. We all called that Sky was an alien very early on. Yeah, <laughs> it was so obvious. Can I just say I love her dad. The no. dad is fucking awesome. Fuck her dad. No, I mean like Fuck. the actor. Oh right. The, I, you got it. No... He's he's having the time of his bloody life. Okay, that's fine. But fuck the character. Fuck oh yeah, the character's so an asshole. <laughs> but actually, no. The the asshole's Grant Ward. Fuck him too. But also Sky's <laughs> dad. I also say this. Some people are saying, "Oh, I loved Grant Ward when he was with Shield." I was like, "I'm going to be honest. I preferred it when he turned evil because he actually got interesting." But when he, he turned... wasn't interesting when he was good. He might not have been interesting, yeah, but it still hurts when it turned out he was a oh, fucking hurt, Hydra but... agent. I'm like, it oh. hurt, but I was like, oh, now I'm actually invested. Can I just point out, I loved it how at the end of uh, the first half of season two, when, like, Sky, like, Sky gets out of, like, all the ropes and just shoots Ward. Yeah. Doesn't hesitate. Literally just shot him. And I'm like, oh! Oh! <laughs> Because uh, what was that made me so happy? I was like, oh, well, what was wow, so great Sky's about going for it now? What was so great about it is for the fact that throughout the entire first half of season two, I'm like, I hope Sky shoots Ward, and then <laughs> and then I I got what I wanted, but I wasn't expecting it. I was yeah, like, oh, she just, without missing a beat, just plainly shoots him. It's like, oh wow, yeah, no builds up, just shot him. I'm like, thank you, Damn. thank you. I'm like, that's cold, Sky. <laughs> well done, Sky. You done good. Yeah. I will say, because a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the season finale, a lot of the, I got a lot of spoilers for like the last several episodes of that season. Yeah, which really pissed me off, but that's neither here nor there. And having watched it, I can understand why a lot of people were pissed off with the ending concerning Trip. Oh yeah, I can now, I now get why after watching that episode, I, I then got why so many people were angry that he died. Yeah. Unless it turns out that him smashing that crystal thing has massive consequences, his death was entirely pointless. Oh. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, Another actress I really love in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, Ruth Negger, who plays... Renee? R- uh, not Renee. Um, Raina. Raina, that's it. I'm thinking of somebody else. I absolutely love her. She's amazing. And... Fuck her too. Fuck everybody. <laughs> I like her. And trust me, you're going to see some very interesting things come. Well, that's the thing though, because she, again, she's obviously an alien too. <laughs> and obviously the same kind of alien that Sky is. Nope. I'm guessing. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, the, uh, well, that's, what that's happens the... to Sky doesn't happen to Raina. Well, I was going to say, because when we saw them, like, Sky still looks human. And Ru- and Raina does not. Raina, d- Raina, we haven't. I haven't seen her yet, but judging from what the ending of the last episode that I saw, whatever she is now, she sure as fuck ain't human. <laughs> oh, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. Gotta gotta catch up now, Jesus. Yeah, it. She is completely different, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> Thing is, guy like um. Is she going to be like an, a superhero that's already established in the comics and stuff? Yes. Is... Okay, right. Yes, yeah, she is. Because um, um, when her dad revealed who her first name is, everyone was like, oh my god, there's a superhero who who that is. And it was like, yeah, that's who she's going to be. Now it's like, oh. Right, because obviously that, she was obviously a superhero that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. She plays a... I, I won't say who it is because it will ruin it for you, but she plays a superhero who's actually pretty awesome. Okay. And a major character for S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Um, also, actually, I just remembered another thing that I, 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 I kind of liked it, but it's also kind of stupid, is uh, in one of the episodes, like, it starts off with Sky having a sort of um, a dream sequence mm-hmm. where, like, she sees, like, there's, like, a baby on a table crying and then there's um, Coulson and Agent May. And it's, like, they, they them walking away from the baby and Sky's, like, shouting after them to come back or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sort of looking at it and going, "Okay, guys, we get it. We get the <laughs> we get the symbolism. 
being a bit too on the nose there. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things I... It's one of the very, very few things I don't like when Josh Whedon does, when he tries to do dream sequences, because I'm not a big fan of when he tries to do them. He did the same thing with Buffy for the last episode of season four, and that was definitely... Ugh. Was it like too on the nose? Like a little bit, and it was also just it just. I'll give him credit; he definitely does it differently. But it's like it's more very lol so random. Some oh, of it, okay, that it's kind like of... oh, it's like wait, what? Like well, there's, there's a guy holding cheese pieces, right? And okay. he just randomly appears with two pieces of cheese. It's like what? What? Yeah, what? No, I get. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> But uh, with the with the scene I'm talking about, I mean, I like the connotations of it because it's basically yeah. saying that you know Sky views Coulson and May as her, as her parents now, and she's walking away, which is yeah. which is, ador- which is adorable, and I like it. But it's like obviously the way they were, and I lo- and I liked the way it's presented, but it was also very sort of again on the nose. It, was a bit it too wasn't ob- subtle. I almost feel like okay, you kind of didn't need that because we <laughs> already sort of knew that was how she felt about them. them. Which was great, because I did love it how when, like, she finds, you know, her real dad beating up Coulson, she pretty much tells him to back the fuck off. Yeah. And it's like, yes, because Coulson's her dad now, you piece of shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was... Reminds me, actually, that um, Clark Gregg was in Joss Whedon's Shakespeare movie. Oh. Mm-hmm. Clark Gregg's just great. Yeah. I like Clark. And I'm kind of... It is sort of great how he's now become, like, a much bigger character, because, you know, yeah. like... Ever since Avengers, his characters appeared in like other like he's the he's in Ultimate Spider Man, where mm. he's still a Shield agent, but he's sort of undercover as the principal at uh, Peter Parker's school. <laughs> I haven't seen the cartoon because I watched the first episode of it and it was a bit meh. Mm. Yeah, de- uh, he's a good actor. I oh like yeah, definitely. Ming Na Wen steals the show. But... Ming Na Wen's still great. Just well, more Ming Na Wen, please. And then when I found out she was Mulan, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh!" I was the opposite. Like, um, I, like, I always loved Mulan. Mulan was one of my favorite movies, and I just loved her voice acting for that. And then when um, I watched Agents of Shield, and she opened her mouth, I was like, "Oh my god, it's Mulan!" <laughs> yeah, I didn't twig it. I didn't realize until I actually looked her up on Wikipedia, and I was like, "She was the voice of Mulan!" Oh my oh god! god! <laughs> Best thing ever! Actually, now that I think about it, because I'm, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 2 again recently, and obviously there's the Mulan world in that, mm-hmm. and Ming-Na Wen reprises her role as Mulan in that. Now that Disney owns Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. world in Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, That'd be I, great. They meet Agent May, and Sora goes, have we met? And May goes, <laughs> no, no we haven't. <laughs> I would love that, but... Ah, uh, I don't... It'd be one of those that would just be brilliant, but how would they implement it? Well, Nomura has said that he would like to have Marvel in Kingdom Hearts, so mm. we're definitely going to get Marvel in there at some point. Maybe not with Kingdom Hearts 3, but definitely at some point in the future. Side game, maybe. <laughs> we have enough side uh, games. No, no more, no more <laughs> fucking spin-offs, please. <laughs> There's too many. Because like, we, can- we know the series is going to continue after 3. Yeah. It's just like, just finish off the main story that you got... And maybe next time you can actually plan your story next time. Yeah, instead of doing so many side stories. To any anybody who tells me, oh no, Nomura planned everything, I no, say, he no, didn't. fuck off. If if it takes about, what, five or six side games to lead into your other games, I'm sorry, no, you did not plan that. Or if you did, you planned it poorly. Oh. Is that when people say, like, oh no, this was the... This was the whole plan from the very beginning. No, it wasn't. No, it Kingdom wasn't. Hearts 1 did good enough that they managed to get somewhere with it. And they've made up the rest. Mm-hmm. Which is annoying, because there are some points where you can tell where they're managing to sort of implement stuff that happened. Like, they, there are moments where I think to myself, okay, they didn't plan this, but they've implemented it well enough where I feel like it, where it Justified, works. Justified, yeah. And then, the re- and then the rest of the time, it's just like, no, you're pulling shit out of your ass now. <laughs> you're making this up as you're going along, aren't you? It is literally that. And I feel if Kingdom Hearts, 3, Kingdom Hearts 3 could potentially make it up, if A, they just wrap up the whole plot entirely yeah. and focus on making a new story for the next games, and B, if the final battle is 
Sora and all the other main characters fighting all the Xehanorts and all the Heartless and Nobodies, but they've got an entire army of Disney characters. Because <laughs> Disney's very much become a sort of non-entity in Kingdom Hearts at this point, yeah. and I feel like that would make up for it. Oh my god, it's like Pokemon, the first movie. You just see an explosion, you see Sora yeah! come out, and all Sora of the comes Disney out, characters... And all the Disney characters are behind him. <laughs> that would be... I would, I would be like, 10 out of 10, best game. <laughs> 10 out of 10, best game ever. Also, they need to get Auron back. I don't think he'll come back. Oh, uh, he's like he had his he had his moment because the thing is he's technically dead. Yeah, but still, <laughs> still, you, you know, Lightning will be the Final Fantasy. No, in the next game. she will. No. You know, it will happen. Oh, I, I, Square, I will pay you anything to not have Lightning in Kingdom. There's Hearts. no fighting it, James. It's gonna happen. She's Nomura's waifu. The only thing that's made me happy is that the guy who is in charge of 13 is not in charge in of 15. That's the one thing I'm happy about. Like, he's not the director. Yeah. Good. Keep him far away from any other Final Fantasy, thank you. Well, it might not necessarily have been his fault. It's entirely possible that there were like other reasons that resulted in 13 being the kind of sort of train wreck that it was yeah but uh, the later games was like yeah we're gonna have lightning for this lightning for that let's shove lightning down their throats because everyone loves lightning everyone loves the bland unappealing character the worst kind of pop the worst kind of quote-unquote popular character is the character where instead of us instead of it being the audience going oh wow this character is really cool <laughs> it's like the people the creators going this character is cool you should think he- they are cool but I don't mm-hmm. think they're cool. Well, you're wrong. They got... You know what it is? It's like Roman Reigns in the WWE. <laughs> Please tell me Reign... you've been watching the Mark remark. Yes, I do. I watch that. <laughs> yes. Because with that, it's like the WWE saying, Roman Reigns is so cool, right? No, he's not. Yes, he is. That's why you like him so much. We don't like him. Yes, you do. That's why he's so popular. He's not popular. We don't like him. Yes, he is. I just love it. They kept chanting bullshit. <laughs> it's the same like, with... Oh, it's wow. The... It's the same with Lightning. Square Enix is telling us that she's super popular and we and we like her when we don't that's not no. the case no you don't decide who the popular characters are she's one of the worst female protagonists in final fantasy every other female protagonist is far superior including queen of quen who might or might not be female yes i am really going that far <laughs> uh. yeah Okay, uh, my throat is getting parched. So... <laughs> I was just about to say, this is actually our longest episode. I've just no, yeah, we've gone way over the two hour mark. Yeah, we. <laughs> this is uh, the longest we've ever done is the first episode, and that was like two hours just yeah. over. This well, that is was two e- hours and twenty six minutes. That was E three as well. So we had... it's kind of funny because you were telling me before it's like, oh, I don't know if we've got enough material for an yeah. episode. It's like, <laughs> wow, was I wrong? <laughs> Yeah, so uh... I, I will say this: the first, I think, the first hour or so was we were on, we were on the dot. We kept to it, and then like the last hour when we were meant la- to talk about everything else, we just completely got off topic. Yeah, the last hour's very much been lol tangent, <laughs> tangent, tangent, tangent. Yep. <laughs> oh, but well, uh... I think we should call it a day here, folks, before we reach the two and a half hour mark. Yeah, we're getting there. So, uh, do you want to sign us off? This is James Hall saying goodbye. Thank you for listening. This is Michael Beckwith saying goodbye. And we shall see you next time with either a new Entertainment Dome episode or a commentary. We shall see. Goodbye. Goodbye and keep an eye out.